what we do here is go back, back. Let's see if this works. You never know, it might do. Mike here, Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. It is Saturday the 30th of March, 2024. Hope you're having a fantastic evening. Uh, it's going to get a whole lot worse from here on in. I'm only kidding. It's going to be fun. We're going to have some fun on this one. It is uh, Easter weekend here in the UK and probably various places else around the world. So hopefully you're having a fantastic bank holiday weekend if you're in a country that does that kind of thing. We certainly do here. So we have a bank holiday Friday. Today is a normal day. Well, as normal as it can be on a Saturday. Sunday is Easter Sunday, and then we've got a bank holiday on Monday as well. Although, for those of you that are self-employed or YouTube content creators, then bank holidays don't really mean a great deal anymore. But, having said that, we are going to be doing some things which are actually quite traditional for Easter. We're doing some cleaning. Cleaning out the closet. Well, the closet of George's PC anyway, which is absolutely filthy. So we're going to give that a, a bit of a clean-up in this stream going to be talking about some tech stuff, taking your questions and that kind of good stuff. And if you haven't already, there is a poll actually running at the moment to see how often do you clean your PC? Are you one of those OCDs that do it on a daily basis? I actually do clean mine on a daily basis. But we have six cats. I think do we have six. Yes, we have six cats. So that's a lot of cat fur. And they've got two children. So there's the mess from them. We've got a wood burner, so there's dust, ash, all that kind of stuff. And it's a relatively small house and all the doors and windows are closed because it's flipping freezing. So yeah, it's uh, it needs to clean regularly. William Bowie says, great video, audio is out of sync. Am I out of sync? Let me know if, uh, Am I out of sync? One, two, three, four. Are we looking, calf? Is it okay? Yeah, I, I am slightly out of sync. Typical. Right. I'll stop the stream and I'll start it again just to be on the safe side. We're streaming. I have no idea if this is going to work or not. Hopefully that's better for anyone that was uh, suffering from that. Oh, and the clocks go forward as well tonight. That sucks. That sounds like it's really low latency. Because I only just said that. <laughs> Ugly Bob says, looks fine to me, but that could just be my sobriety. Dear. Rick says, all is good, no issues before and now. Okay. William says it's okay. Okay. Right. Well, let's let's go with it. Uh, first of all, I should say as well, thank you to... I have to make sure I read my notes here. Uh, this is a gift from a good friend of the channel, Rick H. I'm not going to say the full name on here because it does say it on, your, on this Amazon thing, so I'm not going to say it. It says, a gift from Rick. Enjoy your gift, Mike. This is the paste I use all of the time. Works very good for me. Take care, bud. Cheers from Rick. Thank you very much, Rick, for, I think that's eight grams. Oh, no, 7.8 grams or three milliliters of Thermal Grizzly Hydronaut, which is actually fantastic timing as well because I purchased a new graphics card, which actually is in the stream PC. So as part of my weekly cleaning session, I actually cleaned up this PC as well and cleaned up the drivers and things like that, which are always really important things to do. So I DDU'd the bejesus out of this thing last night and they've now got a RTX 3070 in here for streaming purposes. So uh, hopefully, hopefully things will be better. Picture should be sharper, everything should work. We shouldn't get any problems. Although I did find this a, a very weird card. I'll put it in there. Started doing some benchmarking, some testing for a review. And I was thinking, this doesn't seem right. It seems a bit slow. And the fans were kicking in and it was getting super hot. I was like, this is not right. What is going on here? So I ran DDU and uh, DDU thought there was still a 3060 Ti and a 7800 XT in the computer. So no, re no wonder the thing was getting confused. 
So I've cleaned out all the drivers, reinstalled it, and uh, yeah, it's running much, much cooler and it seems to be performing better as well. So that is awesome. I should say thank you very much to Dave Aitken, good friend of the channel, who uh, let me purchase that at a very reasonable price. So thank you very much, Dave. I haven't paid him yet, actually, so. I said, well, he said actually test it, see what you think of it. So this is the ultimate test. If it manages to, to blah. if it manages to get through a live stream, then uh, it's all good for me. We like that a lot. Uh, actually, I know there's something else I needed to do before we get too far into things. I need to grab the remote control. Oh. oh yeah, we'll do the super chats in a second. I want to change the light in because that is... I don't know if that's too warm. The camera's going to readjust itself anyway, but we'll see if that is a, a slightly nicer... So I'm watching the screen now. It should automatically compensate for the kind of orangey look. But it's it's not very nice for us here when after the stream we pretty much go to bed to have this kind of really super bright studio light and then for it all to go... Anyway, you get the idea. It's not a good idea to have nice bright white LEDs before you go to bed because it keeps you awake. So we'll go with something a little bit more on the... Uh... Yeah. It's a little bit orange. And let's, I'll pass that back to Kath, because there is some super chats that have come in. So we better acknowledge those before we get on. And this is working. Awesome. Lucky man says, way too warm, sorry. It looks like a bit of color now. Uh, where do I start with super chats? Well, there's one just come in. So let's start with that one, first of all, from Arali. Thank you very much, Arali. Oh, I've turned the keyboard on that, I don't. Uh, Riley says 1999 and just says enjoy. Thank you very much, Riley. Much appreciated. You're a lovely, lovely man. Even though I still think you might actually be an AI. I'm not too sure. The the, the uh, thing is out for that, isn't it, Cav? We're not too sure. Mm -hmm. Riley is uh, definitely extraterrestrial in origin, I believe. Uh, there is another super chat from Ugly Bob. Ten pounds. He says he slept like a log last night. Woke up in the fireplace. Ba Boom. It wasn't our fireplace. You'd have a, you'd struggle to fit in there. It's tiny. And there's too many cats around it usually. Yeah, and you'd have cats licking your bits in the morning. Uh, and there's another super chat there from Jason Woods. Fifteen pounds. Thank you very much, Jason. It says party time. If only it was party time. I've got to get up for work tomorrow an hour earlier. Oh my god. I'm not looking forward to that. I've been dreading it for weeks, knowing it's going to happen. And uh, happen, it will do. Tomorrow morning, and I'll wake up and I'll be like, is this the right time? Am I an hour late already? Terrible. Uh, there's another super chat there from Ugly Bob again. Disco, disco, Easter disco. Disco, disco, disco. We have disco lights. Thank you very much, Ugly Bob. I think that was it. I'm just scrolling through yeah I believe that is it so thank you all very much guys and girls there wasn't a girl there that might be a little bit too warm the color <laughs> the camera's not adjusting to that let's have the remote control back thank you it's a nice thing that this is on remote control but it's also yeah, the camera is uh, adjusted now. so let's try That's the one. That one. That's a God, blimey. Tell you what, I'll look right at the light bulb. That'd be a very, very clever thing to do. So where are we with the chat? Oh, there's a £2 from Lucky Man as well. Lucky Man says he went for a drink, got legless. Ha ha! Now that is a, a somewhat in-joke for Lucky Man, because uh, he actually had an amputation. But it's good to see that you're putting a, putting a spin on it. Fair play to you. Dutch Jan says, question, working tomorrow, Mike? Yes, I am. I am working on Easter Sunday. I know, I know. Alright, he says, I'm not liking having the sniffles and losing one hour. I've been coughing all day. I woke up this morning and it's like, I think I must have soiled like a hairball from one of the cats. 
and I've got a hair or something stuck in the back of my throat, and it's been driving me mad all day, literally all day. So if I'm coughing away, I do apologise. You just have to live with it. And when we start dusting out the PC, I'll probably go cough and splutter a bit more. So yes, for those of you that haven't um, done it already, don't forget, you have to change your clocks. It's 2 p.m. British, no, GMT, Greenwich Mean Time. And you put your clocks forward an hour. So at two o'clock, it becomes three o'clock. Which, yeah, I'm, I'm seriously, seriously not looking forward to it. I hate it, the clocks going forward. I like it because British summertime, yay, good thing, lighter days. But I hate the fact that I work on a Sunday and it always happens on a Saturday evening rolling into Sunday to get it over done with over the weekend. So if you work on a Sunday, Saturday being your day off or something, Saturday becomes a much shorter day because you kind of, you have to rewind a little bit, go to bed a little bit earlier on Sunday, on Saturday because Sunday comes a little bit earlier. For those of you that are working in um, the armed forces, services, um, hotels, pubs, restaurants, all that kind of stuff, any kind of service industry where you're pretty much open 24 seven, my heart goes out to you because it's, uh, it's not much fun. But it pays the bills, so what can you do? Uh, Nick Barnes says, wear a mask for dust. I don't think I've got any dust masks. I've got a Mike's unboxing beanie hat, which I could put over my head and my mouth. That might actually work. We're for phone jacker. Uh, William Bowie says, no, it's on a Sunday always from two to three. Oh, what, Sunday evening into Monday. I wish that was there. Last man standing says, when I worked security, we got paid 11 hours when the clocks went back, even though we worked 12. But did they pay you 13 hours when the clocks went the other way? Because kind of swings and roundabouts. Uh, Zaki PVP says, hi, I'm new. Question, I just built my first game PC and I've built it, no display. The VGA light comes on, but I don't have a graphics card. What can I do? Um, well, if you haven't got a graphics card, you're going to get a VGA light, unless your processor has integrated graphics, which sounds to me like it possibly doesn't. So, even though you've got the ports on the back of your motherboard, if the processor actually on the board doesn't have it, those ports are basically useless. So, yes. Sad times. Dutch Jan says, no, Mike William is right. So that is, is that a German thing, is it? They, they do the clocks going on Sunday into Monday. Wow. Rick says, uh, I thought it went forward from 1 a.m. to 2 a.m. UK, same thing really. I think it is this, I'm sure it used to be one to two, but I read somewhere that they changed it from two to three for some bizarre reason. I think it's something to do with the TV programming because a lot of people were still watching TV kind of like one, two o'clock in the morning but for three o'clock, it was considerably less, so it was less disruptive to the TV schedule. I don't know. What do I know? But it is Sunday morning, two to three. Yeah, te te yeah, technically it is Sunday morning, but it's kind of, yeah. Yeah, it is Sunday that it happens, but Sunday morning rather than kind of Monday morning back into Sunday. So I class the Saturday to Sunday as like the night, and then Sunday to Monday as the night, so. You, we might all be right. We might all be wrong. Who knows? Uh, right, yeah. William says, no, Sunday morning. Yeah. I count Sunday morning as being kind of part of your sleep cycle from Saturday. Because obviously you sleep through that era. So you go to bed Saturday night and the clocks go back during your sleep. That's what I'm trying to say. Badly. I should have a tech channel and try and explain things. I would make a very good job of that, I expect. <sighs> so, Zaki's got a Ryzen 5 5600X. No. 
that has no integrated graphics, unfortunately. Which actually is, for you, is probably a bad thing currently, but it's going to be for the best long term. Because if you bought a 5000 series with graphics, they kind of suck, really. They're a bit limited for the PCI Express and less cash and all that. They're fine, they work and you get the job done. But if you have the choice, you generally don't want to go for a G series processor. Unless they're ridiculously cheap. Alessa says, rule for the time change, full back, spring forward. Yeah, it took me years to work that out. I used to get really confused, even up into my mid twenties. I'm sure it was that I was always confused. Like, well, do the clocks go forward or backwards tonight? Possibly because I was a stoner, but also because I didn't really know. And then someone said, yeah, you spring into the summer, you spring forward, and in winter you go back. Or, yeah, what a letter said. But who thinks taking some time off the beginning of the day and adding it on the end is yeah. going to make it a bigger day? It's rubbish, really, isn't it? They should just leave it at one setting or another. Like, daylight saving time hasn't really been a thing like or necessary for a long time. Top off a blanket and yeah. it on the bottom and expecting it to be longer. Absolutely pointless. Yeah, it's like getting a Mars bar or a chocolate bar of your choice and chopping off that end and then put it on that end. So, look, I've got a longer bar now. Let's not talk about chocolate, it's Easter. And the poor baby Jesus. Hey Kev, 2427, how you doing? Rick H says, I think this is a great so-called tech channel. <laughs> I think it is all right. It pays the bills. We have some fun. Matthew Day says, my poor diet. Ah, don't worry about it. Just enjoy yourself. Enjoy yourself while you can. Mr. Rainbow loves coffee and he loves Mars bars. Hmm. I love Mars bars when they used to be big. I liked Mars bars when... when they were twice the girth. When I didn't... I used to love them when I didn't feel sick eating loads of them. I think that's the thing that happens as you get older. Your tolerance goes. I remember very distinctly when I was about 11 or 12... I bought five Mars bars and ate them all. And I was fine. Running around like an absolute lunatic. But I didn't feel sick or ill. <laughs> ah, dear. They so, don't like the colour, by the way. They don't like the colour? It looks like OnlyFans. OnlyFans? It does look a bit orange, doesn't it? All right. I'll give in. I'll give in. I'll give in to peer pressure. Calf, tell them they're peer pressuring me. Oh, you did turn that one off already. There we go. Let's move that around a bit, actually, because... Oh. Is that going to work? How's that doing? Does that look a bit brighter? It'll have to do. You'd have to live with it. David Underhill. So, Mike, or other UK mubber, what is your pay rates for working holidays? Mine is exactly the same as it is a normal day. So, tomorrow, when I'm working in the shop, I will be earning the UK minimum wage, which will be, I believe, £11 tomorrow. £11 per hour. Yeah, I think the minimum wage is like 10.98 or something. I don't know. Someone have a look. I have no idea. But it's a very satanic day for me because it's six hours long, so I get 66 pounds. Sixes are satanic, allegedly. <laughs> no double time. No double time. No. I actually, it's, it's quite funny because generally on a live stream, I earn more in super chats than I do working for six hours tomorrow in the shop. And people say to me all the time, well, why do you still do it? And I actually am asking myself that question more and more. <laughs> I really have no idea. Rakeet says, Mike, you have a great boss, not. Well, for those of you that um, 
watched Friday's video. That was my boss's PC that I was fixing. So I got paid another, he, he paid me basically an extra day's wages, so 66 pounds I earned for fixing his PC. It's great. Dave Vendor says minimum wage is $58 this weekend. Okay. <laughs> I can't, I can't do that. Uh, there's a humorous meme that Calf's got, and I can't show you it. As much as I wish I could, but I don't think it would be uh, it would be suitable. Talking of other things which are not suitable, we'll get this out of the way before we start cleaning the PC. Hey, that's per hour, is it? The minimum wage in Australia is fifty-eight dollars an hour. What? For this weekend. Oh, for this weekend. Okay. So that is kind of. Thirty pounds, roughly. So, if you kind of, if you think of it as double pace, so that'd be like fifteen pounds. So, I suppose, yeah, that's pretty decent for public working holidays. Awesome. Rick says UK minimum wage is one of the lowest in Europe. Yeah, we're not in Europe anymore. We have, we, we have a different <laughs> one. We have living wage. Yeah, we have the living wage. Which is what you need to live, which is more than the minimum wage. Yeah. But <coughs> they will never pay for that. Right. Talking of things which didn't quite work out, I bought this off AliExpress. You know them, lovely, lovely people over in the uh, the land of the rising sun. No, actually, no, it's not rising sun, is it? That's Japan. This is China. It's a different thing. Anyway, let's move away from that quickly. So this is the uh, Mechanique K50, uh, sorry, K500. The Dash B61. So this is a... Basically, a, a very small form factor, 60% keyboard. It's absolutely tiny. Mechanical keys, RGB lighting, USB Type-C connectivity on a uh, removable connection. And uh, let's put you on the overhead so you can see this. Oh, I ripped it. That's taken away a lot of the value. So as you can see, this is actually a really nice, cool little keyboard, and I quite like the color accents. They didn't really have a specific name for this other than the fact that I like it because it's kind of like reminds me of spearmint toothpaste or something so you've got a little bit of kind of that greeny it's that aquamarine I suppose you'd call it I don't know a pale green anyway and you've got the white highlights and then you've got some sort of gray surrounding keys as well and it's kind of nice it's very small you've got some hot swap switches he says so got Red Otomu switches in there, and you've got shine through keycaps, which is always a, a pleasant thing to see on a keyboard. But for those of you that are UK people, spot the deliberate mistake that I made. If you can see it, you might be able to. I don't know if you can. I'll try and hold it as, uh, as best I can. Hopefully, it's focusing. For those of you that are not kind of aware, it does have the UK enter key, which is on the far right hand side. That's fine. But unfortunately, it appears to be in what I can only decipher as being Portuguese or Spanish. So we don't have a pound sign or the UK pound sign here. And over here, there should be a hash key and some other things. So basically, this was 15 pounds, which I think is actually excellent value for money if you're Spanish or Portuguese uh, there's some I'm not sure what that letter is there maybe you can tell me it's the it looks like a C with like a little s or a tail on the bottom of it so I have no idea what that is but everything else on there is written in English so insert delete home end page up, page down, shift, control, win, alt, all that kind of stuff. It's all there. But unfortunately, it's not quite the right layout. So if there's anybody out there in viewer land who could actually make use of this keyboard, let me know. And uh, potentially I might just send you it, depending on how much it costs to send, because these things from the UK cost a fortune. And I'll just unplug it in a minute so you can see what it looks like it actually looks really nice 
uh, USB cables on the side. And there you go, it's got some really nice illumination on it. Sorry, Kath, can you kill the light a second, or have I still got the remote? Thank you. So yeah, got some nice shine through RGB. I really like it. It's a really nice little keyboard, nice and compact and all that. Colin thinks it looks like a Fisher Price toy. <laughs> it does. It has got that kind of toy-esque look to it. So yeah, it's a real shame. It's got a very, very nice key action on it as well. Sorry, you can put the light back on now. Thank you. Uh, it's got a really nice... It feels really nice. Mechanic keyboards are really good. Uh, comes with a spare couple of switches, keycap puller, and also a switch puller. And also there's a nice USB cable with a right angled connector as well. So yeah, it's a nice little kit. And for £15, I thought, I've got to have a look at this. I've got to have a look. Because it said on the description, ISO layout. Now, of course, for those people that actually think about what they're buying, you would know that ISO isn't just UK. But I saw ISO, I saw the, um, the L-shaped enter key, and I thought, yeah, absolutely perfect. £15, count me in. I like it. Anyway, there we go. So, yeah, that was a mistake. So if, any, if anybody can genuinely make use of that and uh, they can understand what the layout is, then drop me a line or calf, whatever. Get on the Discord and let us know and we'll try and sort it out. Roy Fingers wants to know if you're going to be cleaning a motherboard. I possibly will be cleaning a motherboard. Let's have a look at what we've got to see. So we've got George's PC, which we're going to be attempting to clean up. Now, some of you would have seen this on the channel before, and actually I'm going to remove the side glass window to prevent the blushes from Kath, because you don't want to be on the camera. And also it gives me one less thing to clean, so... Oh, JP hasn't been very much. Oh, who? JP, but not been very well for some time. Oh, sorry to hear that, Joe. Hopefully you're... Uh, you're feeling on a bit better, feeling a bit on the mend. If you're not, well, I hope you are soon. So, this is George's computer. Now, we've recently done an upgrade on George's computer, but this thing has got some very unusual things, which it was getting to the point where it would actually take... Clear the yeah, I'm trying. Rick's poor OLED screen. Sorry, Rick. Now, why is your mouse not working? Oh. Tell you what, I'll plug the bloody thing back in. I need more USBs. There we go, clear. Has that cleared it? Yes, it has. So this is George's computer. He's had this thing for absolutely ages. I think they reviewed it when you got it, didn't they? I think I reviewed the case. I did a review of the case. This is the Corsair 4000X, I believe, because it has the the glass or is this the I always get this confused it's either a 4000D or a 4000X I've got a feeling that X might be the airflow so this might be the 4000D I'm not too sure someone's gonna have to let me know in the comments and I forgot to get the bloody blue roll today didn't I that's what I needed darn it so I'm gonna go in the We'll pretend we're having fish and chips. Sorry. There certainly has been an awful lot of vape juice. X is the RGB. X is the RGB. Okay. Thank you very much for that. David. Dutch Jan has cleaned four PCs in the past two days. So what we're going to be using today, we've got some white vinegar. Just put, put this into... Oh, thank you. So this is white vinegar. White vinegar is excellent for cleaning and degreasing. Um, you don't need a lot of it. Just a little bit. And ideally a microfiber. Known as a microfiber cloth to normal humans. Normally you have one to wipe on and one to wipe off. You'd have wipe on and wipe off. But Mike can use this one. Oh, yeah. 
And I get through this. You, you can you can almost hear it when it's getting cleaner because it starts squeaking a bit. There's a few marks on there. I think most of that's actually going to be on the inside. What an absolute disgusting mess. So yeah, that is uh, it's quite a lot of dust on there. And actually, I will say I do actually vacuum this on a regularly, well, a pretty pretty regular basis if I'm honest. Now I am going to be using a vacuum very shortly, our little Tinico. So be aware. Three, two, one. It's not very loud. And if you're one of those people that remembers what the vacuums used to be like in the 70s, well, you'd have probably found that to be absolutely fine. And give that a little more, little bit more extra cleaning power. Now, white vinegar is actually really, really good because it is exceptionally cheap, but it does a really good job as well. And not only does it clean away grease and muck and all that kind of stuff, it's also somewhat antibacterial. So not most cl common cleaners will just clean stuff and give it a nice fresh smell, which is great, but they're harsh chemicals. They can damage your plastics. They can damage your lungs. Uh, and also, if you're someone who suffers with any kind of dermatitis issues, they can be bad for your skin, so you don't really want to do that. So using the white vinegar is very good, and you get a, uh, a pretty nice streak-free finish. And even the streaks you do get on there, they do tend to evaporate, which is uh, excellent. There's what? The white vinegar? I assume. It smells like vinegar. Not like malt vinegar, but very similar. And as you can possibly see, that is looking absolutely amazing. So that is perfect. So that is the start of it. Now this bit here is the mesh panel filter. Now this is pretty grim. So I think what I might do for that is get a, a bowl of water and actually put that in the water. What is it, Dave? and clean it off because that is going to be uh, probably quite stained and soiled. You can see it there. There's definitely some soiling going on. So I'm going to pop that in the kitchen a minute and uh, put it into some hot soapy water, which you can't see because I'm in the kitchen. I should have brought a bowl of water into the uh, the studio. I think that is going to back in. Dave, what are you doing? He's getting his magic duster tail in there. David. So I've got some soapy soapy um, stuff on here now, so I'm just gonna get in there and give this a bit of an agitation. Now looking at that immediately there, I don't think that this is gonna come up very good. So this actually might need leaving in soak overnight. Now what we can use, if you've got some stuff which is really heavily soiled, you can actually let it soak in. Dave, get off the keyboard. Sorry. So I don't think that is going to come out. So yeah, you can you can leave this in. Uh, there's a, a product you can probably pick up at a lot of cleaning places and natural health stores and stuff called borax it's a little bit harder to get hold of but it's really good for cleaning uh, it's basically what they used to use for washing powder for your clothes and stuff so it's a pretty mild detergent you can get it on clothes and what have you dave
from here, so I don't think this is going to come out. It might do. But yeah, Borax is a really good stuff. I think if Cats can find a link for it on Amazon or something, maybe we'll put a link it for it in the uh, in the description. Uh, borax, yeah. It's a really hard thing to get hold of. By the way, this isn't the toothbrush that I use on a, a daily basis. There you go. Baldwin's. So yeah, if you want to get yourself some borax, and borax comes in like um, a powder form. So you just mix it with a little bit of water, put it in a spritzy bottle, and you're pretty much good to go. And you can use that for cleaning all around the house and stuff, but it's actually really good. It's got a very, very mild bleaching or cleaning effect. So if you've got something which is pretty dirty, you can just leave it soaking in a, a bucket or whatever you want to do. Just leave it in there, let it soak overnight. And generally, it brings stuff up really good. This isn't actually borax I'm using on this at the moment. This is uh, just a normal household detergent. But there, I'm going to give that a quick swill under the tap. Dave, stop eating the cables. We'll give this a quick swill under the Mike's come out. Your mic drops out when you're in the kitchen. Oh, does it? Right, sorry. Can you hear me now? So there we go. That has actually come up pretty nice. I don't think there's any marks in there. I'll let that dry off. Again, you can use another microfiber just to get rid of the, the bulk of, the, of the, uh, the moisture on there. It's a pretty easy thing to do cleaning a PC. It's not really rocket science. It's just a matter of breaking it down and doing it section by section. It can be a bit of a mucky job, but I think most people you'll find that it's actually it's quite therapeutic. And also, if, if you're a slightly younger person or someone who maybe hasn't had to do kind of chores around the house or um, you don't live on on your own, like you've got parents or people that look after you, like, you. like me. <laughs> Um, it's actually quite a nice thing to do, therapeutic, because you can kind of just clean stuff in, because it's yours, it's kind of like you can make your mistakes as you go along and learn from them. So, yeah, it's part of that kind of educational experience, which I think everyone should go through. And it's, it's actually a nice thing once you finish to look back at it and see how clean stuff is. So there we go. That actually, that mesh filter, I think that looks pretty much perfect. There's a little bit of discoloration on this side, I've noticed, which I'm not sure if we'll be able to get that off. But yeah, the plastics on that side, now that is gonna be in George's room, the window was this side. So that slight aging down there could have possibly been down to exposure to the sun, although that generally tends to bleach. But I don't think it's too bad. At least you can see through it now. So that is that panel done. We put that to one side. And what is what's Dave been trying to open here? Jeez. That kid. So let's have a quick look. Kid, okay. Let's have a look in the chat a minute, see what people are saying. Uh, I like the pressure wash. I like the pressure wash my PC. Or sometimes running through a car wash. Nice. Uh, Rick says, what's this PC going to be used for now, by the way? Now, that is actually a very good question. Now, I've asked George this numerous times. It's just like, you've got your new PC now. You've got your old PC. What are we going to do with it? What, well, what, what's, your, what's your plans? What do you envisage 
happening to it. And he's like, mm, I don't know. Now, George is um, autistic. So making decisions sometimes isn't always the easiest of things for him to kind of to get to grips with, you know? We, we're all like it to some extent. Some of us are terrible at making decisions or take a long time making them. So for somebody with some kind of uh, autism or OCD or whatever, I can understand that it's uh, it's one of those kind of difficult things, isn't it? You don't, you don't know. Because quite often I think people don't realise or don't understand that people with autism or sort of those kinds of, I wouldn't say learning difficulties, but those kind of behavioural things, they don't necessarily know what you're thinking. And they, they don't, they have, yeah, they can't read what you're right. doing or your expressions and stuff. So if you don't lay out a kind of a, a clear thing, like, right, number one, we don't have room for it. Number two, you have to find somewhere for it. Number three, or sell it. We need to make some room. You can't just have it left around in the house. So if you give them like simple options, like one, two, three, then it makes life a lot easier. If you ask someone with autism or that kind, any of those sorts of de de uh, developmental things, if you give them options, it makes it easier for them to decide. Say, look, this is the choices, which do you want to do? Whereas if you say, what do you want to do? They're not always aware of all the kind of options that you might be thinking of already. So if you do know someone, or if even someone in your family or a friend or whatever, if you're asking them questions and quite they're not getting the answers, you. give them options. And then they'll probably help you find a solution rather than being frustrated by not getting an answer. Yeah. So we're going to get this brush now, just get into these nooks and crannies. Do you want to go out with your and we're going to agitate this. Yeah, where's Dave's tail? I could do with Dave's tail right now. There's a little bit of mutter. These fans are very, very dirty. Dave TV, yes, there was. There still is, I think, on um, yeah, on cable or um, Freeview. Dave used to be the home of entertainment, the home of comedy or something, wasn't it? Something like that. Used to have a lot of comedy shows. Now, a lot of you are probably wondering why I'm not using an air duster or something in here, and the reason is because I'm actually trying to contain the dust, because if you're cleaning your PC and you're at home, take it outside. That's a much better way of doing it, if you can. If you're actually in a room, essentially, if you blow out all the dust with an air duster, all you're doing is you're cleaning one area. So it's like the Mars bar situation we had earlier. So if you chop off one end of the Mars bar and move it to the other end and go, look, there's no Mars bar there anymore. You've moved the Mars bar from one place to another. And that's all you're doing with dust. So if you try and clean your PC with an air duster in your house and there's maybe another PC in the room or just anything else in the room, it's just going to basically land on it and uh, get sucked in by any dust or whatever. Would you say buffering? Yeah. Who's buffering? There is buffering. So an excellent collection there. Don't appear to have dropped any frames there. So it must be on the internet side of things. Keep an eye on it. See if it gets any worse. I have got to the point. There is a, a program which you can basically take your, your router or your mesh Wi-Fi and make it like an open source one. It's called OpenWRT. Some of you have probably seen it in the past or maybe considered using it, or maybe you are using it as well. And essentially what it does is it will transform your router or your internet uh, Wi-Fi into a much better device. And also it will remove a lot of the kind of the factory spyware and stuff like that. Now with our specific router setup we've got here, because of the company it comes from, there are kind of baked in DNS settings, which if you change the DNS settings, it does seem to not like it, but you don't necessarily want to be using their DNS settings. So I will be trying that at some point, installing OpenWRT on our mesh and reconfiguring it and seeing if it actually makes our internet any better. I don't think there is an inherent problem with our internet as such, because in general, it's actually quite stable. 
but we do get the occasional problem where we get some buffering on the stream. And I don't know whether it's because there's other family members doing stuff on their computer. I don't know whether it's the router, just not being able to cope with the data traffic. Uh, whether it's the time of day we're streaming, I, I honestly don't know. So I think taking, the, I've, I've bought numerous routers now, and they've all been relatively similar, I would say, in performance. I don't think any of them have actually stood out of being one being particularly good or one being particularly bad. Uh, as long as they've worked, they've generally been pretty much okay, other than the configurability. And that is a thing which a lot of these slightly cheaper mesh units struggle with, the, the ability to configure them to how you want them to be. So I think that is going to be definitely something to look at. Uh, if, if that's something you're interested in maybe seeing, do let me know, because it's going to be one of those videos where it's actually quite a lot of hard work to be able to capture it all in... Sink his way out? Mm. Right, okay, I will make changes. Dave Maybe it is. Oh, it says it isn't there. Is it working? There we go. Are we still working? Are you still with us? Are we, are we with the Woolwich? That's an old reference. Right, let's give this a quick vacuum. Right, this still feels very, very sticky. Not in a good way. Oh, let's move my keyboard. You can actually see there is actually a lot of dust which has come out on the other side. So we are starting to move it. Uh, is that dirt on there? No, that is structural. <laughs> so now what you want to do is with dust, you want to keep the dust as dry as possible to get rid of the bulk of it. Because if you start wetting it, it just turns into like a, a goop and goes everywhere. So yeah, you don't really want that. So try and remove as much dust as you can to begin with. Then vacuum that dust up, so that gives you a bit more of a fighting chance, which actually I'm gonna, I'm gonna change nozzles. Actually, no, I won't. I'm gonna keep this nozzle for a second. That's looking a bit better. At least there's less dust on there. Uh, Straight this thing's heavy. Sometimes taking all the components out as well makes life a little bit easier. So now what we can do is we can now use the white vinegar sparingly, which I never knew what that actually meant. And being a somewhat typical Torian and a gluttonous person. Or gregarious, is it? Gregarious or gluttonous? I suppose it's the same thing, isn't it? So yeah, I uh, I struggle with not doing things to excess. As Kath will no doubt uh, well, nice confirm. That, but I'm as well. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you're not, because you're born on the third, so maybe really it's not your yeah, some other sign. Okay. Also as well, when you're using the uh, white vinegar for cleaning, it stinks when you're using it, because it, it smells of vinegar, like if you put it on fish and chips, that sort of stuff. But uh, also, it has the nice thing of, it actually removes scents as well. So once you've cleaned something with white vinegar, it deodorizes and the smell does disappear actually quite quickly with it normally within a few hours but whilst that vinegar or acid basically is on whatever you're cleaning it cleans it but it also disinfects and also actually I'm not sure about disinfects I think it does 
because it kills bacteria and you can spray it on things like mold in the house as well and it gets rid of mold but uh yeah it gets rid of smells as well so if maybe i don't know maybe you're smoking or whatever then it will get rid of those smells at least that's the theory depends how much you're smoking in there i suppose this is actually looking a lot lot cleaner and what you can do is if you get your finger or something small and just get it in between the blades you could use anything that's small that is going to fit between those blades you get where i'm coming from fellas and just go around the outside edges there with your microfiber and it's going to give it a nice clean ah. what's the matter ah super chat time dr rainbow love coffee loves coffee sorry twenty dollars thank you i don't use windows i use the os called doors <laughs> then i start writing on the storm because that's the program sure people are strange when they use this os sometimes i need to break on through just to get to the computer i'm confused thank you for your super chat and uh I honestly am not too sure what any of that was about. But that is a good thing about this channel. It does uh, bring out the best in people. And it also brings out some nutters as well. But thank you for being a generous nutter. And welcome to the family. Cleaning blades is such a chore, and it? This, there should be an easier way of doing this now. And most people will probably just give them a quick wipe over, but... I kind of want to do it properly because the thing is as well potentially i don't know what george's plans are for this computer i'm hoping that he's going to sell it because i think that is the the best thing to do because like with anything he's got a really nice computer out there which um he's got full access to he doesn't need another computer um he's already got in that little cubby hole of his in his room he's got his pc He's got a PlayStation 4. He's got a Nintendo Switch. He's got a Nintendo Wii. DS. A DS. <laughs> a DS. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure about a DS, actually. Uh, but yeah, he's got a lot of gear out there, so it's not really... He doesn't really need any of it. And the thing is, a lot of the stuff out there he could probably do in emulation these days. Not that we can think piracy. These are looking good. Going to, with a, a brush in here is probably extreme overkill. Yeah. Thanks for reminding me. No, he doesn't have any VR stuff. Although he did it at work this week and he, he came home with a headache. <laughs> he didn't feel very well. He felt a bit nauseous after doing the, uh, the VR stuff at work. I've never tried VR. I'd imagine it's quite good fun. I struggle enough in the real life, let alone the virtual one. Oh, these are, yeah, these are getting much better now. Wow, there's a lot of dirt on those fans. Times like this, I wish that uh, George had gone for some thermal tape ones. Jim Morrison and the Doors reference. Oh, was it? What was the the strong? Uh, the um, the window, or whatever it was. I can't remember what yeah. he said. Yeah. Ah. Thank you. I don't know Jim Morrison references. I'm far too young. Jason is dead. Happy Easter. Thank you, Jason. Happy Easter to you. Cutting through the grime with this vinegar. It's making me want to have some chips though. It does actually smell like fish and chips. Like if you go to the seaside and you have fish and chips, it's got that smell to it, definitely. I have the internet for that. 
good good point i'm glad yeah that is also a thing i find the internet doesn't actually do things as much justice the before and afters but when you see it in real life the difference is actually quite spectacular so the next thing to do i suppose i kind of want to show you what the boot up thing is like because it's got or at least it had a really strange issue with uh, when it was booting up that it would take like five minutes to boot up and i could never work out what it was and there was all these odd settings in the boss because the boss on this this is a really old motherboard it's the msi um b350 pc mate so that gives you an idea like how long ago have b350 cards been or uh, motherboards been out they were I, I think it came out in like 2017 2016 maybe even before that Raise your hand if you're over 58. Stone? Pounds? Kilos? <laughs> years? <laughs> Inches? Not gonna brag. Uh, what's this? Some unusual dirt in here. Like discoloration. And I'm not sure why we, why we never put a fan in the back. An exhaust fan. Probably because it didn't come with one. That's probably the reason. All right, I'm gonna switch gears a minute. We're gonna fire this thing up and actually see what it's like. Now, before I do that, let's take a look at the, uh, the back. And these fans are still filthy. They might actually need washing. Yeah, George should have chosen uh, SWA fans. Although, I guess they didn't really exist back then. And then you, with swap hands, you can just pop the blades off, stick them under the sink, give them a clean, and uh, you're all good. What was the cable management like on this? Wow. It wasn't good. So power supply, this is a EVGA. Remember them? EVGA Supernova G2. Uh, 550 watt. This is a gold rated semi-modular or actually it might even be fully modular there's actually quite an interesting story to this particular power supply we ordered it off of amazon it was actually for george's birthday when we were putting the pcs together for him and we ordered these bits and there was the the power supply i think if i remember rightly was a possibly an amazon used item like a warehouse return and it said that everything was there but it was just like damaged packaging or something so we're like okay yeah whatever let's go for it let's, let's that, that sounds great let's do that and it arrived and we're just putting it all together and we're getting to the final bits and his graphics card was a radeon rx 480 msi one the armor edition and that needed a eight pin gpu connector or did it need two i think it was just one cable management question mark. yeah there's no cable management uh it needed the eight pin connector and we went through it all and tried to wire it up and I couldn't see an 8 pin connector for the GPU anywhere and I was like well what is going on I think it must have been a, it must have been we needed two I think at the time I'm not sure why I'm thinking that but maybe we upgraded the graphics card later and it's an older card which needed two connectors it might have been actually but anyway so we needed two connectors and there was only one and it's supposed to come with two so I got onto the uh, Amazon online thing and said like this not here what what could we do and uh they said oh we're really sorry about that um we don't have any more in stock um <clears throat> i think all we can do is uh, just refund you your money i was like well that doesn't really help i've got a pc here which my, it's my son's birthday he's waiting to have his pc set up like this is pretty bad and they're like well we're really sorry we'll give you a, a refund on it I said, all right, can you send me a returns label? And they said, oh, don't worry about returns label. We'll uh, just uh, dispose of it somewhere. So I was like, okay, whatever. I'll go and look for another power supply. And I can't remember the exact turn of events, but I'm pretty sure it was, I was packing it away or doing something with it. And there was this other cable that just fell out of the box. 
and it turned out it was the cable we needed. I think, I'm pretty sure that was how it turned out. And the cable was there all along. I just completely had a man look and didn't see it. So I went through all that, put the poor Amazon person through grief, got a refund on it, and event and the, the actual thing was in there. And it's like, oh, I feel really bad now. But then we had something else which didn't turn up. So I think it was kind of like the Almighty's way of saying, well, what the Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. Do you know what I mean? So I lost out on something, but got something else. But anyway, it's just one of those one of those stories. And being it's Easter, it's that kind of biblical time. And I think uh, the baby Jesus looked down on us that day and said, I will bequeath you the power of EVGA in your computer system. <laughs> I don't think it was cheap either. I think it was quite expensive at the time. Anyway, I'm digressing, so I do apologise. Uh, what was the other Amazon kerfuffle? You have to refresh my memory. There's been, there's always some Amazon kerfuffle going on. Um, I. What about your memory? I don't know. I forget. Um, there was. I ordered some RAM, a RAM stick. It was a 32 gig stick that was sent back. I've replaced that now. Was there some other kerfuffle that I had? I, I just can't remember. Right, I've got another drive here, so obviously not going to use George's drive because that's still got his installation on there of whatever's going on. I'm looking at this, and the more I'm looking at this, I'm thinking, how on God's earth did I manage to leave this in such a mess? And then I realised, of course, it's Corsair. Hmm. Okay. So that's not what is supposed to be in there. That is a one terabyte hard disk drive in an SSD case. Hmm. <laughs> the Lord's taketh away straight away. That's what it is. I've told the story and now I've been spited or whatever the word is. I could have swore I had an SSD in here. One that actually was usable. Balls. So you put it in the wrong box. I don't know. I must have opened it because they normally come sealed. That's not worked out well. I'll put that in the uh, in the caddy with the others. Rick, if you're watching, no, it wasn't Rick, was it? Patrick, I had Rick in the name. Um, I'm going to need another one of these caddies soon. Right. So, I don't have... Yeah. I don't have any more SSDs. Or unless they're hiding. That is a, uh, a bit of a faux pas. So, hmm. <laughs> so I can't actually show you the... Uh, can't show you the slow booting. That is most unfortunate. Okay. Why? Hmm. Now I've actually got a PCI Express M.2 slot, but being this is such an old motherboard, I honestly don't know whether it's going to support being able to boot from an M.2 carrier card. That is going to be a very interesting thing because I've. So people have asked this numerous times on the channel and said, Mike, cool, I like this device, it's great for adding extra drives, but is it actually bootable? And it's not something which I've ever, ever gone into in any great depth. So I think it's actually a good time that I did. So I'm going to try that now. And we will learn things together, my friends. Hopefully. Uh, no, that is a network card. That is a USB card. What is that? Four port PCIe to USB 3. No, that's another one of those cards. Uh, ah, Cybrant. I wonder if that'll do it. Right, I have one of these. This is a Cybrant card. I'm sure I've got something better than that. And I'm sure Bob sent me it a while back. But I never got around to testing it. It was like a raid card, but it's up here somewhere. 
Where is it? Where did I put it? Like most things in there, it could be anywhere. Another PCI E card. Um, it was a brown box, I vaguely remember. No, nope. okay, well, I'm not going to be able to dig that out for now, so. Actually. I'm not sure where I put that, so. Sorry, Bob. It's here somewhere. It's just a lot of boxes here. So we've got one of these. This is a little M.2 card, which this adapter does not support SATA M.2 SSD, only PCIe M.2, which is good because we do have PCIe M.2. Uh, should have one of those here. What is this? Oh, uh, I can't see this. Zero defects. Uh, where are we? Zero defects. I cannot see. Can hack the BIOS if it can. I did that on my Venom X6 ah. and it now boots from NVMe. Excellent. Maybe we'll try that. So I've got this drive here. This is an old drive, which actually I'm not even too sure it even works. <laughs> so this could be over very quickly. That'll do. Um, That'll do that. Bit off topic. Yes. Bit off topic. Let's try something off topic. Help me send a. Right. Calf has butchered your name. So that is from Call Me Senpai. <laughs> How to use three pin ARGB if I've only got four pin headers on my motherboard. Okay. So what you'll need is some kind of controller card for that. Now we've done reviews on them before. If you look on the channel, there's one called uh, Cool Moon ARGB controller, and also there's the Game Max one as well. Basically, it's like a little hub, but it's got a remote control. So that is probably the easiest way of doing it. Um, the older ones, there was one by up here, which come with a set of fans as well. That you can wire up to the uh, reset button on your motherboard. And that's actually quite a good way of doing it, depending on what sort of control you want. If you just want to do RGB and you're happy to use the reset button to change for colors, then the up here one is actually pretty decent to be fair. Uh, quite cheap and cheerful. This is not very magnetic. Okay. Is that thing William Bodie sent you? Oh, what, to magnetize me screw? Yeah, it will do. I don't think, I think it's the screw. Uh, magnetize. I think you're supposed to do that. But that is much more annoying. Let's see if that works now. Oh yes. Magnetized to the fullest. Some good shit that is. William Bodie saves the day yet again. William Bodie comes to the rescue. Uh, right, let's turn this round. Now I might have to remove the uh, M.2. Yes, I think I will have to remove okay. the M.2 card. Oh, actually, that M.2 card, I don't know why I didn't remove that anyway, because So this case, I think, has yeah, has USB Type C, and I could have swore I put in a USB card in there, which had the front panel connector for USB C, and also a couple of USBs on the back. But that doesn't appear to be the case now, would it? So I can recover another component that I've bequeathed George, and. Needs dusting out anyway, so I'm gonna take that one out and we'll put this in because we know that slot definitely works because the USBs worked, or at least most of the time. And let's stick that in there. I'm not expecting this to work, and I don't even know when the last BIOS update was done on this motherboard. I'm guessing it would have been. Um, See if we did a video on it. It'd be then. I don't think we ever did a video on it. I think it was one of those things where his PC was messing up, so I just thought, right, sod it, I'll just, I'll just do it. 
and I didn't record it because it was in his bedroom. Quite a lot of the stuff that happens with this computer doesn't ever get um, documented for the reason that it's, uh, it's just hard work sometimes. Let's get our little monitor out. I'm going to use this one today. there this is the little Wimaxit one i got the other one which bob sent me which is down here as well but because there's so much crap on the desk and also the cats are around this monitor i don't actually care too much if it falls on the floor because it hasn't got sentimental value unlike the one that bob sent bob's has got sentimental value because it, it was bequeath us Uh, USB cable, we'll use William Bode's cable. I use this all the time. I actually do genuinely use this cable a lot. So thank you for that, William. I almost said your actual name then. I'm glad I... Cheers, Charles. Cheers, Charles. Thanks for stopping by. You had a big lunch and you need cat, Matt. Oh, God, yeah. We had a roast dinner today for the first time in like millennia. Oh, oh, yeah. Or Tuesday. Tuesday, yeah, but prior to that, we haven't had one in weeks, months, years, have we? Christmas, yeah. Christmas dinner. Right. HDMI. Aye. William Booty says you are welcome. And Ugly Bob says where Bob is concerned, you can't say sentimental without mental. So, sent me to mental. Right, let's. See. <coughs> yeah, that was that was actually class what you did just now. Well, I'm not too sure how well you're going to be able to see this screen. So, what sent you to mental? No. No, I just read it that way. That was all. Uh, where did I believe the mouse? There it is. Right, let's see if this thing will actually. Boot. I'll tell you what, if I plug in the power, that makes booting up so much easier. I found this out before. It's uh I learned that on a on a technical course. And they said, have you turned it on and turned it off again? Here comes the bang. No, no banging today, thank you. Oh good. Steak. We were supposed to have steak for dinner, but yeah, it's still uh, still pretty frozen. But there are some roast dinners with yellow stickers with our name on them. Right, so we have the BIOS screen. I'm not too sure how well that you people are going to be able to see that, but uh, is that right so far. is that visible? Can you see the BIOS screen pretty much? No, just the Vimax. <laughs> Does my bum look big in this? You can see it, but you can't really read it. Okay. That's fine. <coughs> so XMP is currently on. That's fine. We don't really want any of that. Uh, actually, the BIOS date. The BIOS date is the second of the fifth, twenty eighteen. So that is six years old. That BIOS. And that was updated then. I wonder if they do actually have a new BIOS for it. Anyway. Let's see storage. Has it detected any storage? Jay Gordon says BIOS should have a boot and PCIe options available. Right, it's saying there M.2 underscore 1 not present. Now I don't think this board actually has an M.2 slot. I'm pretty sure it doesn't. No. Uh, what is it, flame? Food? Yeah. Yeah, M.21. There isn't an M.2 slot on this drive. So whether it's not recognising that drive, or what, I don't know. Let's have a look at an advanced. Right, ah, there we go. Uh, where is this going to be? Settings. Advanced PCIe integrated peripherals. 
SATA mode, HCI. So I don't know what I'm gonna what I need to look for in here. Power management, Windows OS configuration, Windows 10, WHQL support. I don't know if it needs that. Boot. Right, boot settings. Is there an option? So you've got legacy and UEFI. I have no idea. Thanks for the super chat. Lucky man. Who's that from? Lucky man. Lucky man, two pound super chat says that boss makes your bum look big. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Rubbish. Right, so there in the boot options, it has got uh, HFM 256GD TNG 8310A. Now, the drive itself, I believe, is a 256 gig drive. So it is actually possible that that is actually recognizing that drive. So I think what I'll do is if I grab a Windows 11 disk. Is it not hidden by the GPU? Hide it under the GPU. It is hiding under the, oh, what, the actual, the real M.2? Well, it is actually detecting a drive. No, there isn't an M.2 slot on there. If anybody wants to look it up, actually, on the MSI website, it's the MSI PC, uh, B350. PC mate. So boot option one. That must be it, because that's the only drive which is connected. Look up if there's a BIOS update for the motherboard. I think that's a good idea. Uh, do, 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 do. Do you remember what the boot menu is on this? Let's see. I think it's F10. So for F9, F10, F11, or F12. Thank you for the super chat. I can't see what it is yet, but I will have a look. Hang on. Hold the line cooler. F9. F9 or F10. <laughs> ah, there we are. Right. Uh, it was a super chat from George. Thank you, George. George Sonovs, one pound. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. And thanks for joining us. Right, so let's try... Kingston Data Traveler. We'll see if we can get the Windows uh, install to recognize the disk. And we'll give it a quick blast just to make sure that it's physically working. Because that'd be the real, if you can't install an operating system on it, you can't boot from it. Uh, install now. Setup is starting. Let me uh, get a close up of that screen for you. Oh, I'll just press record on the camera. I'm so used to doing that, just aiming for something. Well, I don't have a product key. Uh, Windows 11 Pro. Actually, this isn't going to install anyway, is it? Because it's not going to have TPM or secure boot enabled. I think it's going to say, ah, uh. Right, so this PC cannot run Windows 11. Okie dokie. Right, let's zoom back out then. And I think what we'll do now is let's have a look on the interweb and we'll see if we can find a BOSS update. Now, this is going to be <laughs> flipping hard. Right, plug that back into there. He says. There we go. Getting a proper workout tonight. So we want a new incognito tab, I think. Uh, okay, so if I show you the uh, desktop stream, hopefully you guys can see that. Yep, excellent stuff. So we want MSI B. 
350 PC mate. Yeah, whatever. There we are. That is the B350. Where's my mouse gone? Oh, there it is. So the B350 PC mate. And that is the board. Actually, for its time, it was actually a pretty nice board. So we're going to have to use the uh, M flash on this because it doesn't have a, um, a normal kind of. Um, What's the thing I'm looking for? The USB flashback button. Doesn't have one of those. So we're going to have to go with the very latest one. Yes, Kath? Dom says, maybe you could give a full specification of that PC and how much George will be looking to get for it. I don't think George would really... Um, the PC, well, it's a Ryzen 7 2700X. It's a GTX 1080, Founders Edition. The power supply is an EVGA 550 Gold, fully modular. The cooler is a Corsair uh, 240i120 or something. I'm not too sure the exact model on that. Um, and the Corsair 400 case. And it's got Corsair RGB DDR4 3200 memory. And it's 16 gigs of RAM. So we're going to have a look at this and see what BAS update I need. And if they need to be do if it needs any... Uh, Anything else? Improved Windows 7 compatibility. Nice. All right, I think we'll just go with the latest version. So that is a beta version. It's bound to be a beta version anyway. TPM at a Bane security patch. Oh, what the hell? Let's do download that. So we'll download that to the desktop. Well, Bill says there's an M.2 on that board. It's behind the GPU. Wild Bill says there's an M.2 on that board. Yeah. Let's have a look because there's a gallery here. And yeah, it is showing, a, it is showing one there. Sorry, but well, that doesn't... Well, that, a copy. I it the that doesn't seem to be there that I can see. Okay. It does show that there. You're absolutely right. But I can't see that there at all. Okay, let's uh, let's do it then, because maybe that is true. Can't believe it's got PCI cards. That's nuts. Okay, let's go back to the uh, desktop main camera. So if I turn this off, because I'm going to need to turn this off anyway. <coughs> oh, you arse. Press and hold. There we go. That's clicked off. Um, I am going to check to see if it's... I do want to see if that card will actually boot. But it would also be very interesting to see if there is actually a uh, M.2 behind there. Because that was the thing. When it came to upgrading it various times, both myself and George both looked at the board and just said, well, there's no M.2 there. But it does seem... That there potentially is one. Sorry, the Freedom House. What's that? I got them as well. Got them what? With the bang? The bang. <laughs> right. What do you know? There is actually an M.2 there. And, oh dear. I think the... Uh, I think the GPU is going to need some cleaning. That's pretty messy. I wonder how blocked it is inside. These are great cards, the 1080s. Okay, so there is actually. Jesus, I made Uncle Bob, Ugly Bob. Actually, you can tell how old this is because that is. In the uh, the twenty two one ten position, I think. Well done, well, Bill. Pretty sure I read that earlier as well for two different people. What they said that I had an M M dot two behind the GPU. And they said it out loud to me. Um, 
See, now I'm in a dilemma. So I want to see if I can get it as a boot from that card. What do you... What, right, okay. Question for you lot out there. I want to see if this will boot from that card anyway. So... Um, yeah. Which should we do? Should we do the M.2 in that top slot, which is obviously going to work? Or do we do it in the M.2 card to see if that is actually a bootable card or not? We are going to have to do a boss update first of all, though, I think, before we do any of that. So bear that question in mind. I'm going to put this GPU back in temporarily so we can actually get into the BIOS. The, the basic input-output system system. Oh, I took the screw in, eh? I'm not going to put both screws back in because I think that's a bit pointless. Actually, I'm going to spin it away. I need more room in here. I think that's been an ongoing thing. It's almost the end of the tax year as well, so I better buy a table. Ah, oh, you bastard. What's people saying in the chat? <clears throat> Actually, I could take off the Mike's unboxing microfiber hoodie. There's Poppy. Hey, Popsy. Oh, I wish they did this t-shirt on my size. <laughs> hey, Popsy. Wouldn't that be like the one in um, Weird Science? Weird Science. Woo. He's got her top on in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Weird Science, what a great film. Uh, where's my BIOS flashback USB drive? Uh, let's unplug that briefly. Right, talk amongst yourselves a minute. Because I've got to do things. So let's do extract all. USB drive paste and delete that one. Old school BIOS updates. Love them. Are you going to read the chat? I will. For what they want you to do. Okay. Right, let's get this uh, back up and run in. Run in, run in, run, run in, run in. Copyright strike. Because I sound just like the Black Eyed Peas I do. <laughs> <laughs> Right, what's everyone saying? Top slot. Uh, Nick Barnes says use the motherboard M.2. Ugly Bob says it's in there anyway, might as well follow through. <laughs> I follow through. Uh, put Windows 10 on it, says Dutch Jan. Use the motherboard. Hoover the fab hole. Not too sure what that means. Uh, it's just a case of boot from PCIe. You got your own fans light on. M.2 with new OB. M.2 with new boss obs, really. Do both. Uh, I would put it right on the board if you're in a testing mood. Okay. Fair enough. Oh, what does that say there? Please power down and connect the PCIe power cable. Great stuff. Now, that is the sort of thing. Why don't they still do that? How many times have we had someone on our Discord saying, Oh, my graphics card don't work. Why don't they do this anymore? To have a message on your screen saying, dipshit, plug in your power. Might help to plug in the connector to it into the GPU. Yep. You're very, very true. So, it's just one of them rookie errors. God damn six plus twos. Why are you making this like the sooner they get rid of the six pin 
VJ adapters, the better. Right, let's try that. Come on, show me the boss. There we go. Uh, hello. All right, don't boot into whatever you're booting into. Why would you not go into the BIOS? I was hitting delete. Did I unplug the thing? Okay, maybe I did. Ah. <laughs> That's why. Right. Uh, Windows 10 disk out. BIOS flash disk in. USB keyboard and mouse cable in. And reboot. That's right. Can't go out. All the big cats go out at night. There's Otis. Right, we're in the BIOS. Excellent stuff. Right. Let's uh, rearrange this camera. Oops. Right. So bear in mind, this board is at least six years old, I think, possibly more. In fact, actually, we could probably look at the time and date we bought it on our Amazon uh, history. So we want to do uh, M flash. Do you want to reboot and enter flash mode? Heck yes. Uh, did I turn my PC off? I did. Come on, focus. Focus, focus on the job ahead. Bob, if you're watching, it's not uh, your eyes, it is the camera. So this is the old MSI M flash. In blur. In blur. And this is the one we want to flash, so we can click yes. BIOS is updating. How exciting. At this point, normally in the videos, I would fast forward this bit all the way through there. But sadly, we're streaming. So, you got to put up with it. I'm going to have a slurp of tea. Well, it's actually coffee, but a slurp nonetheless. Mm -mm. Tonight's coffee beverage is um, caramelized biscuit, I believe. Yes. So, Beaners Caramelized Biscuit. This broadcast is sponsored by Beaners Caramelized Biscuit and, it, and it's burnt biscuit flavour. <coughs> Bob Fleming here. Alright, boss is updating. Not much more we can do there, so let's read some of your comments. Uh, Rick H says Windows 10 as far as I go. Linux after that? I don't know. Uh, Mark Berry says Kelly LeBrock was married to Steven Seagal. I know, that's quite hilarious. They could have been the power couple, but it all went wrong. James Miscellaneous says, I condone dipshit messages from the UFI. I do. Jay Gordon says, the magic of live. Yes. Aletta says, Mark Berry, I'm not worried about Mr. Seagal. I think I can take him, lol. <laughs> David Thompson says, my PC band name is Boss Flashbacks. Tom says, there's no copyright strike for that whistling for sure. Thank you. 
Rick says, I suppose you want my Molex to go as well. You can keep your Molex. Uh, Davy C. How you doing, Davy C? Good to see you in the chat. Uh, it says, Asus B350 Plus motherboard can still run Windows 11, and that's six and a half years old. AM4 has been a really, really nice platform for AMD. Very nice platform. It was a little bit unsteady at first, but it soon found its legs with the B450 and uh, then onwards. Be interested to see how this performs actually with that new BIOS on there being this big, brings it basically up to date. <laughs> Matthew Day says, my band is called uh, 1023 megabytes. We haven't got a gig yet. <laughs> now, for those of you that don't know, a gig technically is 1024 megabytes. So, yeah, he's just one megabyte short of a gig. Very good. Well done. Ugly Pop says, save it for Crap Joke Friday, dude. Yeah, that was a good one. Matthew Day says, the agony of the progress bar. Yeah, I know. This would be a bad time to turn the PC off, by the way. David Underhill says, AM4 is still viable for new builds. It definitely is. I've actually done a new build this week. Uh, it's currently under the table. Or is it in the other room? No, it's under the table. Oh, balls. Jay Gordon says, Windows 11, more to do with CPU 2700X not on the list. Ah, damn it. Oh, yeah, that's true. I don't think the 2700X is on the compatibility list. Uh, Dom says, believe you did understand it wrong, you whistled it perfectly. <laughs> right. But because it was Mozart and he have passed away long ago, you're good to go. That's true. Yeah, actually, I think Mozart is one of the few things in the um, the YouTube creator, what's it called, that you can actually use without getting into trouble. Whoop, whoop. There we go. That has done... So at this point, we want to take out that and put in the Windows 10. Just gibbering away to myself. Using Dave as a pillow. Dave. Blame it. <laughs> Dave's just a big fluffy one. Right, hopefully we'll go into the BIOS now. Oh, wow, what have they done to the BIOS? They've made it horrible. But if it works, then I suppose there's not really much you can do about it. So, what have we got? English, yeah, time and date. It's never 10 o'clock. Bloody hell. That means it's 11 o'clock. Uh, ACPI, so resizable bar, we'll turn that on. PCIe link speed auto. Lanes, yeah, whatever. Integrated peripherals. I could do with some peripherals right now. Oh, yeah. USB handoffs. Ricardo's just come in and says no drives. Weird. No drives? Yeah. Question mark. Um. Yeah, it's kind of, let's see if this will support UFI. We don't have a drive in there at the moment because I've taken George's drives out. So I've just put a, a, a basic drive in there just to see what can happen, see if it will actually work. But I'm thinking now that, uh, right, save changes. So save that configuration, and we want to boot override into the Data Traveler UEFI. 
So this is going to override any boot stuff and go straight to that drive and we'll see if it will actually recognize it. If not, we'll take the graphics card out, stick it in the M.2 slot. Ooh, nice picture on the MSI screen there. So hopefully without any user intervention now, this should just start Windows setup. It's going to show the MSI screen a few times, I think. Uh, I didn't enable XMP. Oh well, never mind. So Windows 10 setup, excellent. And let's go, oh actually, did that say United States back then? Oh, what the hell. Pretty sure it would have said United Kingdom. I don't have a product key. Windows 10 Professional. Yeah, whatever. I've got no choice, have I? Uh, custom. So let's delete. Well, there's nothing on there anyway, so that's good. And installing Windows. Hey. Hello. <laughs> Bob, you are a genius. Now, actually, I'm... Oh, that's not really helpful, is it? Actually, that's okay. Right. Um, 2700X Windows 11. Two Ryzen, anyone else get Windows 11? Oh, where is the mouse gone? Will... Right, 2700X does appear to support Windows 11, I think. So look, Windows 11 supported processors, AMD, Athlon, uh, Ryzen we want, don't we? Ryzen 7. Actually, you can find out at the same time as me. So, oh, Ryzen 7 2700 is there, and the Ryzen 7 2700X. So we can do Windows 11. Happy days. So, in that case. Actually, before I zip that out, let's see if this uh, reboots and actually does start doing the Windows installation. Because at the moment we're on that uh, separate PCI card. So, at the moment I've not done anything to the BIOS and the M.2 is still in that other slot. So if this gets a blue screen or a boot error, then that's bad. If it carries on and does a Windows installation, it means that that card does have the ability to be a uh, bootable drive, and it appears it does. So that is a bootable M.2. That's pretty cool. That's actually very cool. Let's see if it does actually go into Windows and doesn't blue screen, which potentially it might still do. Let's have a look at your questions. Uh, Dom M has just gifted five Mike's Unboxing viewers memberships. Thank you very much for that, Dom. Much appreciated. And that is Barry Cartwright has been gifted a membership. Ricardo has also been gifted a membership. Uh, William Bodie has been gifted a membership, and Firestorm, and Charles Ballard. Didn't Charles go earlier? Yeah. Oh, bless him. So Charles Ballard has got a membership, and Firestorm as well. Thanks very much, Don. Thank you so much. Uh, Jay Gordon says, Riser cards work on 4th gen Intel a lot older. 
excellent stuff. I was unsure. And to be honest with you, like when people will say or ask to ask me, Mike, does that work on uh, this card? I've never been able to actually answer because I've never actually tried it because most motherboards have got an M.2 slot on. Whereas this one kind of has, but it was really, really hidden. I can't believe after all those years. Hey, well, such is life. Well, this appears to be working on that M.2. Oh, I miss not having to log in. Who's going to use this PC uh, user? Sounds like a good name and sounds like a great password. This is the point where it'd be good to have just a, a no to all. God, I can't. No. I don't want Cortana. You can shove it up your arse. Nick Byron asks. <coughs> Um, you can only do it by an HDMI cable as far as I'm aware. I'm not sure I... No, I don't think you can do Bluetooth. Right, there is the box for the two-port USB card, which I'm going to recover. Thank you, George. Actually, I'm surprised I didn't put his PCI Express blanking plate in there. Well, this seems to be working, so that is, um, I would say, success. I do wonder if it uses the standard drivers. In which case, can I take that M.2 out and just put it straight onto the motherboard and it'll still boot? I think that's actually a, a slightly more interesting question. Personally. I'd imagine it just uses a standard NVMe style controller. There we go. Windows is installed. And let's see what this actually, what it refers to itself as. So, uh, system. And actually, no, I don't want systems, I want device manager. Oh, the menu's on the wrong side. Should be in the middle. Device manager. Ooh, lots of lots of bad things going on here, but that's fine. Because all we want is uh, disk drives. So disk drive, yeah, is showing up as the one I said it was earlier. So the uh, HFM two five six GD, whatever standard disk drives. And driver, yeah, I'm just using a standard Windows driver. So I can take that drive out, stick it into another M.2 slot, and it's uh, going to be absolutely fine. Fantastico. Let's move that back. Right, so that works. I'm actually quite pleased about that. Although I do think I've just lost an M.2 screw on the desk somewhere. Which is very much a me thing. Danny QFG. Danny QFG. Um, just built a new system, sent me 100X 3D, 4080 Super, all working fine, then stopped working. Like the display cable was unplugged. Checked all the cables and still nothing, but power's on with no GPU. Well, if you've got a 7800X 3D, you can just unplug the graphics card and plug into your uh, onboard graphics and see if you get an output. That's one way of testing, seeing what's going on. Depending on the motherboard you've got, you can check your diagnostic LEDs to see if the VGA light is on. If it is, then uh, you might be having some sort of problem with your graphics card. I would guess if it's been working and it suddenly isn't, that it's a cable come loose. If it's HDMI, very, very common thing to happen. If it's DisplayPort, less likely, but still possible. But hard to really give you exact answer here on a live stream, but I would try the onboard graphics, see what happens. 
and just make sure that all the connections are as they should be. Again, diagnostic LEDs on your motherboard are going to be the kind of the saving grace to to see what exactly is going on. But anyway, this seems to be working. So actually, what I want to try is let's time how long it takes to actually uh, reboot the system. I forgot this is touch. So shut down. So let's do shut down. It's probably a slightly unfair thing because the BIOS isn't really set up or anything, but we'll try it anyway. So normally when Reset CMOS. this PC would have been um, set up from new, sometimes you could go away, George would go and like brush his teeth and come back and it still hadn't booted. It was just spinning, saying it's loading. So, Which I think was down to one of the drives, but let's see. So, oh, thanks, bye, Ali. Let's get my uh, thing going. So start. And um, what's Viali done? I can't see. It's free membership ran out, so he renewed it. Oh, thank you, Viali. Danny says they got an outdate. Danny says, yeah, I've got an output from the CPU. Ah, uh, right. So try reseating your graphics card. Make sure the power connection's all okay. Right, now this might be what it was doing previously. So, unless I've done something really stupid, which there is always that possibility. So we just turned, oh, there we go. And we're gonna get a screen. Or is the screen turned off? Or are we waiting? Matthew Day says, if you speed test the SSD, it will be slow, slots for PCIe too. That is true. Although I think the drive is the drive I've got in here is like a really old one anyway, so it might not oh, be that fast. Why Ali says no problem. Best channel on YouTube. Right, this doesn't appear to be working now. <laughs> so either this is booted. Well, I don't know what's going on. There's no display now. So we're over a minute in. I think this is what would happen sometimes. So unplug that. Try again. It's almost like it's gone to sleep or something. So that's a minute and a half. <coughs> no, it didn't take this long before, did it? What's the diagnostic light saying? This is actually a very typical thing, isn't it? A, a no display thing. So the diagnostic LEDs have all gone out. So in theory, the computer wholeheartedly believes that it is actually uh, displaying an image somewhere. William Bovey asks, is there a new battery in the motherboard? Um, no, I don't think there is. So yeah, we're getting absolutely no signal. And all of our connections are in. I haven't touched any of the connections. So again, this is the sort of thing that would happen. So normally it would just be on a black screen now. Not say no signal. I think that's just powered down. Yeah, it's got the green pulsing light on the side. Oh, actually, no, it's not. Red LED. So I don't think that's working. Another app or fix or fail UK possible. <laughs> yeah. Right, so that turned off then, like a soft off after pressing the button. So that means the motherboard logic is still working but for some reason it's just not outputting a signal. So let's just make sure the graphics card's in firmly, which it does appear to be, and we'll try another power on. 
and I'm not sure if you guys can see the diagnostic LEDs next to the RAM there. So currently we've got CPU. Looks like it's going to stay there for a little while. That's turned off. Well, Bob says, Mike, this is, or is, is especially unusual behaviour with AMD PCs and GPUs using HDMI. Display port will tell you if you've got an issue. Um, unfortunately, I don't have another portable monitor with a display port. Which makes that hard to do. RAM cycling on and off was solid before? Question mark. Uh, yeah, the RAM. I'm not sure what is going on here. That is very unusual because we we basically went through two lots of things and installed Windows, and then it's just nothing. So maybe it's a BIOS setting. Is the BIOS set to GPU out after the update? Um, yeah, because the um, there isn't onboard graphics on this because this is a 2700X. But yeah, definitely nothing there, so... Check the connection on the GPU. I've just, so I pressed the power button and it's shut down, so... In theory, it thinks it's, it's displaying something somewhere. Uh, if the if the GPU was a problem, it would hang on the diagnostic LEDs, say in VGA. So I'm just going to try the uh, USB cable, this powering, this monitor, into another port, just out of morbid curiosity, because you never know. And I'm going to unplug the USB from there. Actually, let's plug it into the front one. Although I don't know if there's enough power going through there. So let's see what happens. Very nice. A glimpse of light. PC case that have front mesh, does it need to have air filter? Yes, also my current case gets dusty very easily. What would be the best suggestion when buying a PC case for beginners? That's a lot. Um, a nice easy case for beginners, I would say the Lian Li 216. It's a little bit on the expensive side, but it's an absolute breeze to work with. And you've got basically everything you need there. So you've got a fan controller, you've got decent fans, um, lots of cooling, all that kind of stuff. It's, just, it's a very nice system to work with. Now with this, I can see the PCI Express card. I'm not sure if it's picking up on camera. You might just be able to see it. But down here, there's actually activity lights for the hard drive. And that is actually flashing away as if it's doing something. But I think we haven't changed anything. I don't think we've got a loose cable. Try to boot into BIOS to <laughs> enroll the OS. Or reset BIOS, maybe. Bring out the GT1030. <laughs> is that David? That's Matthew Day, I bet. The last one is. <laughs> yeah. Dom, and then William, and then Matthew Day. Right. <coughs> Glimpse of light says thank you. You're very welcome. There are other cases. I think the Game Max F15 as well is worth a, worth a look. It's getting a little bit long in the tooth now, but in terms of uh, motherboards, you can't go too far wrong. Right, see if we can get an output now. Right, press the power button. And Windows is doing its soft off thing now. So shutting down Windows and closing down. Because there's no drivers or anything loaded as such, then it's doing it. Right, I'm going to try what was mentioned just now. Not the GT1030, you heathen. But I'm going to try the, uh, just to see if we can get into the BIOS. And the only thing I've changed now, I've actually plugged in the keyboard and mouse. I can't imagine that it wouldn't boot because there wasn't a keyboard and mouse present. But, you never know. We'll see if we get into the bar screen. So I think we've got CPU warning light on there. Um, I've still got my timer going because technically it still hasn't shown a screen, but I'll stop that. So 
don't know, we got absolutely nothing. No signal. And that is, I think, has powered down. But it's very unusual because on there, all the diagnostic lights are basically saying that everything is groovy. Flip the M.2 in the motherboard, boot, and it might go to HDMI. Um, that might work. I can't really see the logic being that we've booted numerous times and installed windows we're not connected to the internet so it's not a driver update or anything but that was well Bob. I need to run <coughs> issue and it's always been via HDMI causing this. yeah HDMI is problematic but I can't see how nothing has really changed because we haven't we've done the BAS update and we've had a successful boot since then you have another HDMI on the GPU Hmm. So we've got a reset button. I wonder if it'll start from a reset rather than starting from a power on. So I've pressed reset now. CPU light is currently on. And there we go. Windows is loading. And there we go. So what we've got here is... The PC won't drive, won't turn on from the power button, but it will turn on from the reset switch. So, does anybody have any clever ideas what that might be? Because that is a little bit above my pay grade. It sounds like an electrical problem, potentially to do with the power supply. So, because when you press reset, I'm pretty sure you're sending the 5 volt rail to ground, I think. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, Jay Gordon says wired wrong. Well, the thing is, if it is wired wrong, it sh the, the power button is a, just a, a, a momentary switch. So, if you have the positive and negative, or negative and positive, it doesn't make a difference because you're literally just bridging the circuit to tell the power supply to turn on. And it can't be the power supply is incorrectly wired because the PC works and is functional and everything powers up as it should do. So if there was anything which was cross-wired in there, then we would probably get nothing or we'd get magic smoke, which we're not getting. Uh, it is recognizing the power button. So yeah, if I press the power button now, it should go into, yeah, we're going into the soft off. So that is in the off mode now. So if I press res reset, it doesn't come on. So it's not tripping anything there. If we just press the power button now, you would expect for it to just wake up and work and boot into Windows which it might do, but we'll see. It didn't last time. <laughs> or maybe it's just from a cold boot, possibly. My money is actually on the power supply. Mike so Bob says, I've had the exact issue, Mike. Always an HDMI-related issue. That is possible, but I don't Set know... The M.2 to default. Uh, well, the, the M.2 drive, because if it wasn't recognising the M.2 drive, it would go to the BIOS screen, because that's the default configuration for all BIOS. Uh, the HDMI thing is definitely a possibility. I'm trying to think how I can test that and uh, validate that. I can't think of any easy way I can show that. But anyway, so that, in theory now, the computer thinks it's on. So I press the button, a couple of seconds later, it will shut down. There we go. So now we'll turn it back on again. So pressing the power button, in theory, shouldn't make the PC turn on. It should go through the, the process, but not actually give a display at some point. 
Pop. So, no, it's, it isn't gonna it isn't gonna work. We're gonna go into a power off state any second. Uh, Matthew Day says maybe it's not fair running without full drivers. Yep, yeah, that is uh, that's a fair comment. But then safe mode should still work without any drivers at all. So at the moment the PC is currently powered on and working. Uh, we can see there's activity on the light. So I'm going to press the reset switch. And I'm almost 100% certain we're now going to boot into Windows. There we go, MSI logo. So something in the system isn't waking up. So it could be the GPU not waking up to the signal. So we might actually go back to that original theory of trying the GT1030 in there and seeing what happens. While Bill says, try the M.2 in the motherboard. Okay. Uh, Viali says, have you got the chipset drivers installed? At the moment, all that's installed is the basic bog standard Microsoft drivers that come with Windows 10. Uh, it's probably going to get a, a piss on now because it's been reset a couple of times. And Although saying that, that has actually been something which has happened previously where you just go away for hours and it'll be on that. But I don't think that is going to be related to... Well, it's not related to the BIOS. Ah, blue screen. Okay. So something is definitely not happy. So we'll turn this off. I'm going to take the graphics card out and I'll try the GT1030. Now that is a, a worrying thing. Now sometimes when you press the power button, it actually turns itself back on again. And I've had a lot of problems with Corsair's power buttons because they're a very weird kind of switch. I don't know. I'm not even sure what the word I'm looking for is. I'm not a big fan of Corsair cases. You've probably guessed this already, but for anyone who isn't entirely aware, it's a shame because they actually they do look very nice, but I don't think the quality control is particularly good. And, uh, well, I would say arguably the longevity, but you've all seen how dirty this PC was. And this is the PC that our uh, beloved Daisy actually took a whittle on. Well, if you get close enough, you can still smell her. So I'll take out the, uh, the 1080 and I'll put in the classic card that is the MSI Aero ITX. <laughs> a graphics card that didn't cost me nearly a hundred pounds on it. I can't believe I've spent a hundred pounds on this or 89.99. The hell was I thinking? Oh, I remember what I was thinking. That'll be a fun video to get a really crappy graphics card for an almost 100 quid and see how well it runs. And being that we've got a, uh, a worldwide shortage of GPUs about to hit us, people might have to buy this. Well, to be fair, they did. I did. Okay, so we don't need a uh, power for the... Uh, the monster that is the the thing. If this works straight away, we can pretty much say the graphics card is uh, bad. But I don't think it will. My money has always been on the motherboard. Well, let's be fair, George has been using it for years and it's been okay. But he turns it on kind of once in the morning or once in the afternoon, and that's kind of it. Right, so that is now timed out. We'll press the reset button 
and pretty much guaranteed we're going to see the MSI logo. But at least this rules out the graphics card. Doesn't necessarily rule out the HDMI thing though. Actually, I don't think we're going to get anything though. We haven't got a nice black screen now. Or is it just off? Or have we just made things worse? Potentially we've made things worse. Diagnostic LEDs, still saying nothing. Okay. No, we're dead now. Dead in the water. Try again. It's dead, Jim. <laughs> I did actually plug in the HDMI, didn't I? I'm sure I did. I am gonna. I'm gonna question myself. not giving me a display has it no so you can see well you probably can't see but there is the activity light down there so the drive is spinning and it's doing stuff as if it's wanting to load or it thinks it's loading it's just not outputting um, I don't think it's going to be the cable for the monitor but I am actually <coughs> tempted to change that just to be on the safe side because you never know And I'll try a reset. Actually, did I click? Now oh, there we go. Let's see if a reset will do it. Yeah, this this uh, this PC has always been a little bit weird. And it got to a point where it was for a long time. It just would not work properly. And almost every night after work, George would get home, turn on his computer, and there'd be something wrong with it. Or it'd be crashing. I was like, what's going on with this thing? It's very weird. William says, go into the BIOS and look at the settings. New BIOS might have something else uh, to I can't get into the BIOS. PSU, off, paradigm. All right, let's uh, try it. We'll turn the P PSU off. And find a switch. So switch it off. Press and hold the power button. So that's discharged the PSU entirely. Fill with concrete and make a boat anchor. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try it. Jay Gordon saying, pull the CMOS. Might end up doing that. Right, so we power cycled completely. And it's come on. It's not happy about it, but it's come on. So, do we have a problem with the power supply? Put the PCIe card out. Okay, I can do that. Uh, restart. We will take the PCIe card out. Right, so that's re rebooting. Right, okay, so we're back into Windows. That is a good sign. <laughs> I'm very pleased to see you, Mr. Windows. Uh, is this thing actually plugged in anymore? Yes. Ah, there it is. I'm trying to use a mouse on this. Oh, I'll just press that, that'll be easier. Right, so power. Uh, shut down. Uh, power down. So I'm going to put this into a completely off state. And just for a sanity check, I'm just going to press the power button. There's no reason why this shouldn't turn on. Mike, 
like this live stream went south quickly. I thought this was just a clean up job. It did go bad, didn't it? Well, this was all part of it. Uh, in the stream, the thing it did say clean up and fix, possibly. So it hasn't come back on after a reboot. So let's try and recreate what we've done. So if we press the power button, this should turn off in a couple of seconds. So that's done a normal window shutdown. That's good. So I'm going to turn off the power supply again. I'm going to press the power button to discharge any power. And you'll probably see the fans light up a little bit. I think they are completely discharged. So pressing that power button is basically discharging the caps in the power supply. So I turn, okay. turn the power supply back on. Try a different PSU. I think a different PSU is probably the answer, to be honest. Uh, almost certain it's the board Glenn. Zero defects is off. Cheers, zero defects. Get a Mac, they just work. <laughs> and there we go. So you said cleaning. So we have now been able to replicate a problem and also a fix. And that does appear to be discharging the capacitors in the power supply. So that would point to the power supply being potentially faulty. Now we can test for that to some extent. We have got a power supply tester, thanks to Ugly Bob. So I, what we're gonna be looking at, I think is the power good signal. The power good signal could be problematic on this. So we'll turn it off. Actually, it doesn't really matter which way you do it, so if I'll do it that way. <coughs> we'll shut that down. And let's get our power supply tester. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in the main ATX. 24 pin into the tester. Oh, if I can get the damn thing out. Oh. Some absolute eejit is cable managed the bejesus out of this thing. That was me. <laughs> oh. So this isn't going to be a definitive test, but it will certainly help us point in the right direction. Choose Rob Bill. So we've got um, 12.2 volts on the 12 volt rail, we've got 3.3 on the 3.3 rail, there's 4.9 on the 5 volt rail which is okay, our power good signal is 270 milliseconds and our 5 volt standby rail is currently at 5 volts. Uh, the bleeping we're getting there is because we don't have anything additional plugged in onto the secondary 12 volt which should be these down the bottom here. So let's turn that off. Amazon return PSU dodgy. It's six years old. <laughs> and arguably probably full of vape juice and cat piss. I think it is the power supply. Right. So. Um, I'm not sure. What I might try. No, actually, I was going to press power. So this is from a discharge state. So in theory now, this should boot into Windows and display an image, which yes, it is doing. 
Now, it might have just been loose power cable on the actual motherboard. And I'm not going to rule that out altogether. But what I will try now is we'll try and replicate the fault again by doing a power off. And then we'll do a power on pretty much straight away. Georgie's off. Cheers, George. Now, in theory, this shouldn't work now. This should not display an image because we've um, shut down and then restarted. So at this point here, it's meant to have the MSI logo. So the power supply is not allowing the system to turn back on when the power supply goes into the lowest off state. But from a reset, so if we do reset, which I probably don't want to do because this loot is still booting Windows, I can see on the actual card. So that could be a VGA thing. Um, we've only done NVIDIA cards at the moment. So it might be an NVIDIA thing. I wonder if it's an AMD thing as well. I currently don't have another AMD card here to test with. Not this easily accessible. Remy Bob and William say can't you just use the M.2? Um, yeah, I'm going to try the M.2. Right, so I'm going to shut down the PC now. There we go. So if I take out the, the graphics card now, and we'll move the M.2 drive and see if we get any different performance. It could be that the PCIe routing doesn't like having the M.2 card in that slot, which kind of doesn't make a great deal of sense, but it is a computer, so they're not really designed to make sense. There's thousands of little Oompa Loompas inside this computer. Try another PSU. I might try another PSU. But I'm going to rule out the M.2 first because that's actually quite an easy thing to try and do. <coughs> so we proved anyway that the M.2 adding card is a thing and is bootable, or at least if you power cycle the PC it is. Excuse my French. Ah, there we go. Sorry if I offended anyone by my language there. Sometimes it's hard to be a woman. Giving all your love to just one man. It's been a long day. Well, the actual... Gosh darn it, that was in there tight. I can't see it at the moment, sorry. Ready, Bob, you may still get that HDMI NVIDIA boot issue still. It happens on all my HDMI screens. Okay. Matthew Day, maybe clear CMOS, load defaults, reapply settings, set window 10, WHQL. Well, that sounds like a plan. And Rick fix or fail, did you? <laughs> the boot issue with HDMI is somehow related to Windows update in the last reject so many months. Um. So on top of it. A few months. Well, it's this, this problem with this PC has... Actually, I'm going to put George's card back in. I'll put the tiny back in. Because <laughs> this is going to need a proper clean. I'm going to have to disassemble this, and that's going to take hours. So that's not going to happen in this stream. Because we've digressed, as I tend to. Every day. Kaf, Kaf always says to me, so what's the plan of action today? 
And I'm like, well, make videos. <laughs> she said, yeah, but what? So I don't bloody know. I've got a list of, on the board of about 15 videos that need to be made. And then I generally read some news or read a story or have a problem of my own, which I need to fix. And then it's like, right, better do a video on that. And then I'll never get around to doing the videos I'm supposed to be doing. You're touching your mic apparently, and you're squeezing your pee bit too much. Sorry, it's me tits. <laughs> me, me, tit, me tits are touching me mic. They're not, I'm joking. It's not my tits, it's someone else's tits. Right, we have the things. So, let's see what happens now. Any guesses? Is it going to work? It will do. It will work for the first time because the power supply's been off. Although it might not, by the look of things. Um, what have I got here with display port on? And have I got a long enough display port cable to reach it? Uh, Right, so that hasn't helped. But we could validate to see if this is actually working by plugging a DisplayPort monitor, which I currently have over here by adjacent to me. Where's that glass? I'm watching. You're not on the chair. Okay. That cable's definitely not going to go that far, is it? Sometimes it's hard to be a woman. Uh, this monitor has got this. I am trying to display port monitor. Who's saying that? I've not la 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 him, but it shouldn't really make a difference, but I know it can do. We have to try all the eventualities. Sometimes it's hard to be a woman. Then I've got that going from my head now. It's quite annoying. Display port, I'm <laughs> <laughs> right, so I've plugged in display port, so let's change the uh, inputs. DP1, DP2, nope, nothing on that one. Try DP1. Nope. So let's press the power button, shut it down, click. Now the monitor is connected. You can't really see it, but it, well, you can actually. It's connected there. Bang! Thank you. So in theory, because I've turned this on, that should automatically cross over because it's a new signal. Hasn't. So we've still got our CPU light on there, which I can probably see. Okay, and we'll try another display port output just to be on the safe side. Did you break it, Mike, mm. or did you find it like that? <laughs> <laughs> that is the age old question. So that doesn't seem to work at all. <clears throat> Sorry. So it doesn't appear to be a display port or HDMI issue at the moment. But we do seem to have some repeatable problem. So if we press the power button, let it turn itself off. And I'll plug back in the little monitor.
National Lampoon's fixing with Mike Clark Riddle. Thanks for that. Um, I'm going to press and hold the power button. So we're going to discharge the capacitors in the power supply entirely. So that's with the power switch off. That's great. Smashing, lovely. Look at what we could have won. So now to turn the power supply back on, press the power button. 100% going to get an output on that screen. Rally Bob says you must connect it to a display port with nothing else in. A display port with nothing else in. Um, okay. I'm not sure how I'm going to do that. So I've run out of... Actually, that didn't work then. When it was supposed to. Would it cause a memory problem? Could it, could it be a memory problem? Or would you know if your RAM was having any issues? Um, that is a good question. Turn it off again. I always thought it was a RAM problem years ago. Well, I turned the power on quickly and then I pressed the reset button. Why? Because that does something to the power supply. It sends a signal to the power supply to do something different. So that, so it's the power supply, it seems like it is the power supply. So all that talk of getting a freebie off Amazon. Good bastards. Get another power supply. I got another power supply, I'm going to do that. Right. <coughs> we are going to try the, uh, the old favourite. Well, it's not really all favour. I hate it. So let's turn off the computer. We'll try the Game Max power supply. Plug that in. That's actually quite an easy thing for us to achieve, and actually pretty quick to do because we don't really need a great deal of uh, leads connected. I won't bother connecting up the SATA. Actually, a better add, and I for the pump. How many RAM sticks do you have in the board? Maybe take one out. I've got two. I've got two RAM sticks. Come on. Power Extreme. Oh, I forgot it's got horrible bloody EPS connector in the top on it. So we'll try the power supply. We'll see what happens. If it all goes wrong then. Hey ho. If this all goes wrong, at least I get to sell it all for parts. Sorry, George, if you're listening. Freedom House says, can we set an end up to a default just to satisfy my curiosity? Um, oh, sorry, I missed that before. The M.2 is the default drive because it sets itself automatically as default because it's the only drive connected. So I don't think I can set it to anything else other than default. But if we can get into the bar, so I will double check that to make sure that is the uh, the primary boot option. That does make some sense. Although that shouldn't affect the um, the display, because regardless if there's a drive even physically in the PC, it should still provide an output. What? Like display A for and VGA, yeah. What's George got upstairs? Um, he's got DisplayPort and HDMI because he's got two monitors. So he was using both, but Windows on a multi-monitor setup generally only displays on the... Well, it depends what graphics card it is. Sometimes it displays HDMI first, sometimes it'll display... Uh, it'll show DisplayPort first. Oh, that's not got SATA. Um, 
I have no idea if this power supply actually works anymore. It's full of spiders. So if this works first time, not to be not unexpected, and it hasn't. <laughs> That is slightly unexpected. Hmm. Okay. So in theory, this is booted into Windows. So I press the power button. That should then do a soft off. I'll then press the power on, press reset, and see if pressing reset forces it to boot. Yes, it does. So, it would appear there's something wrong with either the power switch, the reset switch, or the motherboard's logic. Or the engineer. Or the engineer, of course. So... <laughs> Thanks for that. So let's see what we can show. So resizable bar, we can enable that, that's fine. The PCI Express lanes, we can leave that. ACPI, that's just a power LED. Integrated peripherals, VGA detection is set to auto. So I'm gonna set that, well, it's got the option of auto or ignore. So I don't know whether VGA detection, ignore. Is that detecting, is that ignoring the onboard? There isn't any onboard anyway, so. Uh, da -da, so, USBs, that's the handoff. Actually, I'm gonna disable that and see it. Super IA, that's the same, that's the parallel ports. So we've got disabled and the uh, COM port, that's disabled. Hardware monitor, there's nothing really that we can see in there. Power management setup, so EPR ready, which would be put into power, uh, low power faults, is disabled. System power fault protection, I'm gonna enable that. I I don't know, I'm still not entirely convinced of that. Uh, BIOS CSM UEFI mode, so we are in UEFI mode. And the graphics card, has uh, N uh, NVIDIA GPU UEFI, so that's working. And secure boot is enabled. Uh, wake up events, we'll choose those from the OS. Uh, where are we, overclocking, don't want any overclocking. Currently the RAM is set for, uh, XMP is disabled. So I suppose we could try turning it on. Uh, boot order, so full screen logo display. I'm gonna turn that off so it shows text. And post beep, I'll turn that on. I think I did that before anyway. So boot option one <laughs> is UEFI hard disk Windows boot manager. So that's what we want and the UFI hard drive there's only one drive in there so I can't choose more than one option so let's save changes and reboot now this is doing a reset so in terms of power this is a reset so this should boot back up into Windows normally in theory which it appears it is yeah because it's getting the HDMI signal and there we go we're going into Windows <laughs> So we need to now shut down and then turn the PC back on. Now we haven't got any drivers installed at the time, but to get an actual display, it shouldn't make any difference really. Well, it looks like that <coughs> resolution has changed because I'm sure, uh, maybe add drivers for the 1030. That looks like it's not using the right drivers, but anyway. John says, can you port it to PCI 3? Um, it doesn't have anything else. So PCI 3 is the maximum this has got. 
It doesn't support PCI4. Yeah, A2 and B2 for two sticks of RAM. Yes. Boot with screwdriver, roll out case connections. Good, good shout actually. Jay Gordon. Lord Erectus. Hmm. Hi Lord Erectus, how are you I doing? I crossed the streams power cables in my retro system case when the factory wired it back to front. I guess it does happen. I dare you to cross the streams, Mike. <laughs> uh, no. Have you seen his hair when he gets an electric shock? Yeah. <laughs> my, my hair is bad enough as it is. So that has now done a shutdown. So if we press the power button now, if this those settings have changed anything, this will boot up. If it's changed nothing at all, then, yeah. So, no, no signal. So I'll press the power button again to get this to turn off. Taking a bit longer this time. Right, that's where it this time. Uh, right, so let's unplug all of the front panel I.O. And we'll just jump start it with a screwdriver just to rule out the power switch being a problem. So this, in theory, shouldn't work. No, and as expected, it, it hasn't. I don't think it is the power switches. As much as I'd love to say, yeah, typical bloody Corsair. But, no. I'm pretty sure that isn't the problem. So I'm not going to press the power button, because that doesn't work anymore. Um, I will take out one stick of RAM, just to satisfy that uh, question then. Try different RAM. Oh. Actually, I'm, I'm going to plug in the uh, power connector again, power switch. I'll only plug in power switch and not reset. Maybe I'll plug it into the right slot. One, two, three, four. That's better. So now we're just running on one stick of RAM. In theory, we shouldn't get a display, but we are. So that's a good sign. Uh, devices change, blah, blah, blah. F1. So now we're on just one stick of RAM. I won't bother we'll save and exit that. So now this is going to reboot. And then we'll go into Windows. We'll close down Windows. Do a normal shutdown. And see if it turns back on. If it does turn back on, then it looks like it is a RAM stick. Which is Corsair. And it is DDR4 uh, 3466, but it was running at 3200. That was actually nice RAM. So that has worked. So power and shutdown. So now we're into the normal power off state. So if we press the power button now and this works, is the RAM. I'm kind of hoping it doesn't work. But I think it's going to. It is going to. There we are. So... I'd imagine someone in the chat is now saying, now change the sticks over. If you're not, 
spoiler alert, that's what I'm going to do. It's a shame, actually, because that's a really nice RAM. I'm not saying that is definitely the fault, but... Last man standing called it. Try the other slot. So that is the known good stick. I'll put that there. And... Uh, always lick the slots. And then clean them with a cotton cloth. Actually, there is some... I wonder if that is vape juice on there. Or pee. No, I'm sure we cleaned that last time. Well, after you licked it. Mm -hmm. Did you lick it? Hell yeah. <laughs> Daisy pee. Blech. Right. Put in the ram stick in the first slot if it doesn't have to. Uh, first slot is going to be useless because the first slot isn't connected to the ram uh, memory controller. You'd have to go stick three first of all. Now that's worked on its own. So we know that slot number two definitely works. And if we turn that off, could it possibly be a dirty RAM slot causing all this problem? So press power on. This normally wouldn't work. It would just go back to the uh, dead screen, but no, that has worked. So both sticks work fine in slot number two. So I wonder if we put both sticks back in, is this now magically going to work? Shutting down. Is that enough? So, yeah, this in theory now shouldn't work, I think. But it looks like it's gonna. Ah. Oh, yep, yeah, it has. Yep, yeah, it's changed, we know. Um, actually, is that enabled? Overclock it in. XMP is currently disabled. Right, let's leave that disabled. We'll reboot and uh, rebooting should be fine. Reboot, rebooting we know is okay because the reset button always made the PC start. And there we go, we have a display. I'm going to check to see if it's actually recognizing both sticks of RAM because that flashed by way too quick for me to actually see it. Uh, system. 16 gigs of RAM. Okay. So, shut down. Then we can turn it back on again and see if it works. Well, that's just got a bad thunderstorm heading our way. Not mm, there. It should be turning off if it does. Right, that CPU light stayed on a bit longer then. So now it's stopped working. But it does appear. Yeah, that's definitely stopped working, so let's turn that off. Hmm. 
Now I wonder if it's because XMP isn't enabled and it's n those are quite high-end RAM sticks. So I wonder if XMP is the problem here. So easy way of finding out that, if we do reset, and then go into the BIOS, turn on XMP, and then see if it works. Which I think we did already. <coughs> I don't think it's gonna boot now. Right, didn't like that at all. So let's try take out that nonsense. And what have we got here? <clears throat> got some Lexar Aries DDR4. This is pretty nice stuff. And actually, for all intents and purposes, it pretty much looks the same as well. I don't think slot one is actually wired until slot three is enabled. Uh, sorry, no, slot one. Yeah, slots one and three are daisy chains of two and four on an AM4 dual channel setup. So I don't think that works. I know it would on uh, older Intel systems, but I don't think it does on new ones. Right, we powered on. Let's see if this just works. Boom. I think I said quit without saving. Let's see. I think I just did quit without saving. Well, at least it's rebooted into the BIOS or allowing me to get into the BIOS. Uh, overclocking XMP. Profile one, save changes and reboot. There we go. Well, at least we've got some RGB now. Is it going to work? Yes, it's going to work because we've got an HDMI signal. Perfect. I wonder if it is that Corsair RAM. I think that RAM was like the fastest RAM you could buy at the time when we bought it. And it was really, really expensive. But generally it's been actually not too bad. Right, so if we shut down completely now, powerful system, power on, normally shouldn't work. So if it does work, that's kind of a good sign. Don't think it's going to though. No, it's definitely not going to. Barry Cartwright, I looked in the manual and the highest memory speeds is 32 MHZ. Right. Uh, I think that's what this... Oh yeah, this is 36, but I chose 32, I think. I think it's only 32. Right, so that, does that work? Yeah. Sorry if I missed it, are you running the latest BIOS? Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, it's a, it's a beta BIOS. Let's see what I've set the XMP to. CPU light on for a long time then. Yeah, the CPU light seems to stay on longer when it doesn't want to boot. Now that's not going to boot because that's been on the wrong thing for too long. So I think I've got to reset the CMOS now because I've probably set the XMP too high. Or I could just take out a stick of RAM, which might be easier. 
Uh, did someone say about slot one? Yeah. Actually, I'm not going to try that just yet. Very frustrating. So yeah, C that's worked now. So F one. <coughs> right, XMP. I'm not sure if the reset switch uh, is reconnected. No, the reset switch isn't. I haven't done that yet. Right, so this is only going to allow XMP profiles of 3333 or 3600, neither of which are suitable for our particular needs. So I'm going to leave XMP off. Oh, I might as well let that boot now. So if I can put that other stick back in and it still boots up properly a couple of times, it looks like it's a memory speed thing, which being this is a B350 uh, chipset, it's not entirely like out of the question that that is going to be the problem. And also, uh, memory on early AMD stuff was really hit or miss. Even at lower speeds, like I struggled to get 2400 megahertz RAM running at one point. So Nathan says, Mike, I recommend the tech support one and um, post your no display issue there. Lots of experts who can talk you through it all. <laughs> Uh, that is actually funny. I don't think the motherboard is. I think the motherboard is no longer up to stuff. I think you might be right. What is RAM training? Uh, RAM training is where the motherboard tries different frequencies and voltages, and basically, look. There's on the RAM chips. There's what they call an SPD chip or serial presence detect. And from the factory, they program that with the, the memory settings. Uh, let's do F2. So yeah, it loads the factory settings. So you've got options for non-XMP and then XMP and then maybe another XMP profile. So RAM training is basically the system reading the SPD data from the RAM sticks, putting that into the BIOS, trying those speeds and seeing if it gets a successful post. If it gets a successful post, it will apply those settings from the RAM training. If it doesn't get a successful post, I think after the second or third attempt, it will then revert back to the default DDR4 or DDR5 values, like the base settings of like 2133 or 2400 for DDR4, and I think it's like 5200 for DDR5, maybe 4800, one of those. But yeah, RAM training is just reading a chip basically and trying what the chip's telling the motherboard to do. Right, we'll turn this off. We'll turn it back on. I'm thinking it's probably just going to be pretty poor uh, RAM traces on this. And maybe just putting in some actual 3600, uh, 3200 RAM would be very beneficial. But I don't think that's going to work. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, that seems to be working. So this is DDR4, but with no XMP profiles applied. So this is just running it as native speed, which for those sticks, I think is probably going to be like 3200 anyway, even without XMP applied. Would be nice to get a definitive answer. But if it powers on here and displays an image, it's done that numerous times now. Yep, it's going to work. It's gone back to the Pro Series BIOS screen now, rather than being the, uh, the UEFI one. 
which is a little bit screwy. So, what is the RAM timings of this? God, I can't see that. So 1.35 volts. So I'm going to try his original RAM back in, but without XMP enabled. And if that doesn't work, then I think it's just that RAM isn't totally compatible. But having said that, it's been in this rig for probably the best part of four or five years, at least, if not more. But it just could be that it's just trying to uh, stretch the system just a little bit too far. Um, and to be honest with you, it's not the first time that we've seen this because there's been quite a few times on a Discord where people have said their specs and said what RAM they're running. And we've turned around and said, well, you might be trying to push that RAM a little bit too hard for that system or for that processor or for that memory controller. So it does happen. <laughs> Just sad it has to happen to me. Well, to George, really. So yeah, that's booted up. So we'll run with the loaded defaults. into Windows. So maybe it is just the XMP, just it doesn't like running XMP on those sticks in this system. And of course, the memory controller could have degraded, the RAM um, tra traces could have got damaged, I guess, at some point. This will be the real test now. So if we turn off, we press the power button, and it turns on and it boots then I think we've pretty much found the answer and it is XMP. Fingers crossed. Or it just doesn't like that RAM. Nope, it's loading. Praise be to baby jeebers. That looked like it rebooted a couple of times then. And bizarrely, we seem to have our display back as well. With the normal resolution. Okay. Turn it off again. And let it power off properly. Power back on. If this works now, I think that is pretty much what it is. We just can't enable XMP. Yeah, it's going to work. So I think that is a definitive answer. Uh, the system is fine. It just can't run at the XMP rated speed. So whether that's, it doesn't like 1.35 volts going through the memory controller on two sticks of RAM, that's possible. You do draw more power, obviously, with one stick of RAM against, uh, sorry, two sticks against one. So it could be that. Um, could be the, the RAM is just too fast for the system. Who knows? But it seems to work. So I'm, uh, I'm kind of happy with that. At least I've answered the question that it isn't the drive, it isn't the board, it isn't the graphics card, hopefully, it isn't the HDMI or DisplayPort stuff. Although, Definitely never rule that stuff out. But yeah, XMP profiles and the voltages. We could probably manually put the settings into the BIOS and it might be stable, but I think it's probably better at this point that we just leave XMP off and let it do its own thing. So I'm gonna turn it off for the last time and uh, put all the power supply stuff back in. Because good old Game Max, as good as you are, you didn't fix our problem. So I'm going to read, is there any um, questions I should have been answering? Number one, we'll always check the RAM. 
Yep. Well, we sort of did check the RAM, but normally it's nice for RAM to either, for it to just work or just not work. Yeah, I think that's probably a good idea. How fast is the RAM now? Uh, the RAM will be running as default speeds. Can I try the other PSU and see if that works? That is in. Yeah, I think that is it. Hey George, Hello. your PC's been driving me nuts. <laughs> yeah, leisure. What's that? Yeah, <laughs> that's a good idea. Wow. <laughs> That's just hurtful. Only mazes awake. What's happened to the PC then? Uh, it just wouldn't boot up. And it, it seems... Did we turn off XMP? Uh, I think we might have done. I think that's what it is. I think I, I updated the BIOS and it must and I enabled XMP again. And then it was doing weird shit. Oh, and now I've lost the stream signal. <laughs> right, let's turn it on, see if this works. This should work, because the same power slide back in. Yeah, it's going to work. There we go. HDMI signal. Happy days. <laughs> Don't worry, it's not got your drive in it. All right. I've put a separate one in to protect your data. And I fresh install Windows 10 on a different drive, and it works. And works quite quickly. Oh, awesome. And have you even cleaned it, or started cleaning it? The plan in the stream was to clean it. Sorry, for those of you who can't see, George is actually just there. I am talking to him. I'm not just talking to myself. Anyway. You're not in there, are you, George, really? Dad's talking to himself. That is, that is working. So I'm going to turn it off, and that is now going to have to be a job for another day, because time is getting on. In fact, it's getting on a lot more than normal, because it's an hour later than it should be. Oh, I've just broken that. Excellent stuff. Right, let's have a look at your... Comments and questions. I'll button this back up. That sounded worse than it really was. Really need to have a look at the cable management in here at some point as well. That'll be another fix or fail video. Uh, Andres, oh, I've, I've unplugged the power, so the, oh actually, someone actually said earlier about the, the PSU filter, don't forget to clean it, it's actually really clean, it's about anything in there which is actually clean. Can't see George on stream, he's gone. He's gone, unfortunately he's gone back up, he's, he's not allowed out, he's like Harry Potter, he lives under the stairs. He lives in the stairs, under the stairs, Spongebob George Pants. <laughs> he, he'd hate me if he was here now. Uh, where's the side panel? He needs to clean his desk. So, um, actually, I'm sorry, viewer, that we didn't get to clean the PC and finalise it all, but you know how these things go. Uh, these things crop up and challenge our expectations and sometimes our knowledge as well but it's always good to try and figure these things out and I think we can say relatively confidently that we know what the problem is the RAM itself is just a little bit too much and I think looking back now and when I asked George that did we turn off XMP previously I think that's what we did actually end up doing to alleviate the problems that he was experiencing. 
So I would say there's a large portion of tonight's stream, which is basically my fault. But I'm a grown up, I can admit it. And besides, what else am I going to do? Uh, thanks for answering that. Rick H, uh, sorry, not Rick H, Rick Willie Bob says, I was convinced it was an HDMI NVIDIA boot issue at first, still live and learn. Well, that's it, you definitely do. And that is why I try not to necessarily say that anything is wrong or that anything is not possible because if you've worked with PCs long enough, you'll know for a fact that the weirdest things can and do often happen. And uh, generally when you're actually trying to film a video, I find. Is Bob passed out yet? He's passed out. Bless him. Well, it's nice to know that the Easy DIY Fab uh, PCI Express M.2 thing actually does work and is bootable. At least we've uh, learned something there. And we've also learned that I've forgotten to put the M.2, uh, not the M.2, the uh, PCI Express cover screw back in. Like most people, well, I guess most people, all the boxes for this are actually upstairs in our loft. So we've got boxes for basically everything. So if at some point George does decide to sell this PC, it's, uh, it's going to be a very nice one. I would say well looked after, but after you've what you've seen me do to it for the last two, two or three hours, you could probably cross that off. Although I don't think I've harmed it. Alright, is there any other questions in there? Otherwise, I think I'll probably start wrapping this up. Uh, let's... Uh, Got you. Look, Tony War says, anytime I play with my PC, it ends up like this. Yeah, I try not to. Oh, thank you. Is there football on tonight? I guess there must have been. What was, who was playing? I've got a feeling there's an England match tonight. So England versus Bulgaria or something. I don't know. Romania, maybe? I don't know. I'm not very good with uh, geography. Or graphics cards or actually quite a few things. Right, let's put this out of way. Well, just thinking. I was just thinking to myself, there's something really missing from my box over here. And I know what it is now, it's the uh, power supply that was in there. Okay, right. Back to some sort of sense of normality. That is a word, look it up. We didn't get very far tonight, did we? Let's have a look. So, let's have a quick look at the chat and then I think we'll wrap things up. It's been a long one. Uh, Rick H says, no, United States. Oh, is that for the football? No, someone asked if he lives in Thailand. Ah, right, okay. Look, Tony Wars says, time to start the stream for real now. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, Rick says, I'm all typed out going to leave the stream but I'm going to be laying down and listen to the end. I think it's uh, I think it pretty much is coming to the end now I'm just going to be packing up I'm so still dreading getting up for work tomorrow even though 
I've just looked at the time and it's just like, well, that boat has sailed, hasn't it? <laughs> so much for me. I know, I'll get an early night. But now, because the clocks are going back, suddenly I've, I've full word, suddenly now I've got like energy. So it's technically it's like one, what, half past 12 in the morning or 30. You're not focusing on it so much. You're putting yourself into I know. stress mood. I am stressed. Stressed, I've got to get out. I need to put this monster up somewhere. Anyway, yeah, so, yeah, I'm wide awake now. I'm more awake now than I have been all day. I swear I'm on American time. What's that like? Zapping all your yeah. Yeah, Leave my toenails alone. Anyway, so we flashed the motherboard, which probably needed doing anyway, because it was six years out of date. Calf just flashed her uh, lady bits at me. Put me off my straight then. And yeah, I think that is going to be it. <laughs> Last man standing says, watch out, calf, Mike's got energy. Yeah, but that normally means that I go to bed and then my head hits the pillow and then I'm snoring and making animal noises all night and calf's there going, that's why I wake up with a bad shoulder. Did you? What, in frustration? I don't know, I think it kind of is my sleep Right. Wake me up saying it. On that bombshell, thank you all very much for joining us tonight on this uh, Easter stream. Hopefully, Uncle whatever thing gets you lots of lovely things for Easter and uh, you get chocolate today out tomorrow. Me, personally, I'm going to be in the shop working, but I will definitely be heading into the local Morrisons and Sainsbury's after work to get some of the clearance bargains. Hopefully, there'll be plenty of them, so we'll have lots of chocolate for the rest of the week hopefully you get some too um yeah thanks for all your super chats thanks for all your donations for commenting for joining us in the stream and for germany being all round good people very much appreciate you all and if you want to continue chatting to other like-minded people why you'd want to do that i don't know but maybe you do uh, you can head over to our discord which is completely free of charge to join and there's full of lots of people that you've probably seen in the chat here already so most of them are going to be in the uh, in the Discord at some time or other. Do bear in mind, it is a UK-based Discord. So time zone-wise, you may find some of the uh, Aussie and US people going to be on slightly different times, but there is generally an overlap. So if you want to chat to someone you've met online here, then you're more than welcome to do so. I think that's going to wrap this one up. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching and have a fantastic rest of your weekend. And don't forget, if you have to work tomorrow, put your clocks forward. Why would you be late? Like I might be tomorrow. Again, I've done it before. Anyway, thanks everybody. See you all later and uh, have a good weekend. Cheers for now.